way bigger than Clifford. Way bigger. Way bigger. I remember it being Clifford. This park is like really good to just skate around, and the big section's gnarly. It's funny, I asked Utah why he'd do it to us like this, you know, this is his contest, but he said he didn't give him the dimensions. He looked scared at first, but now he's just skating this thing like no problem. Right here, let's see it, Utah. I want to do it. So crazy. The big section hurts. Big section hurts. Hello and welcome to Tokyo, Japan and the Pacific Ring of Fire, the most populous urban area in the world with over 30 million people and home to the greatest new talents in skateboarding. Today we're inside Ariaki Arena for Uprising Tokyo, where that talent will be on full display alongside the best skaters from all over the world. And it has been an absolutely incredible weekend of skating so far. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm Paul Zitzer, alongside Amelia Brodka, founder of Exposure, documentary filmmaker, all-around ripping skateboarder. It's great to have you here in the booth with me today, Amelia. I'm so grateful to be here just witnessing the level of skateboarding all weekend long. It's been an absolute trick barrage and I am really excited to see the finals go down today. Yeah, so today, this contest comes to a head. It's a pro-am event, so it's open. The best talent is invited to be here, and it, they've showed up. Now, it's sort of come down to Japan versus the world, in a way. Well, in the women's field, only Japanese skaters have made it to the finals, yeah. and there's a lot of new faces and new names here and tricks that we have not seen done in this field before. There's no no doubt the progression has been absolutely phenomenal. We, we saw it start to happen a few years ago, but then you come to an event like this and you see it just exploding. And there's no holding it back. There's And it's a, it's a youngish field, so this talent is only gonna increase over the next few years and decades. What does that do to the veterans? That's a really good question. It's going to be definitely interesting to see how that goes down because we saw in the qualifiers and in the semis, it they skated like it was a final every single run because it was tough just to make the cut to today. You're right. The consistency has been absolutely crazy. Uh, usually in the final, you'll see a few perfect runs and and those are the ones that are in contention to win, right? Here, you had to do perfect runs just to be in contention to make it to the semis and then to make it to the finals. All right, we've got, we've got a big day still ahead, but first we're gonna throw it down to the third member of our crew, Mark Kaur. What's the vibe like down there, Mark? Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna do a little introduction. This is Mark coming all the way from Malaysia out here in Tokyo, Japan. That's what's up. This is my first time in Tokyo, by the way, but jump straight into the skate park right here. The vibe is amazing. You can see great skating going down the past couple days. People qualified from the yesterday's semifinals and top 10 made it to today's finals. And as you can see in the background over here, we got everybody jump in all the way in the big section already, man. And we got all the guys that have, the, the crowd is filling up. People coming out, I see some familiar faces, and I'm getting hyped for the rest of the day, man. But a little more introduction to what we got going on at the skate park right here. I'm gonna walk over here, right? Cameraman, come follow me, right? I have a very special, special guy that I wanna talk to that is the guy behind what we have with the skate park we have today, right? And Uprising Tokyo. You hear that? People are getting hyped for this right here, Kenny. Kenny Reed, everybody, Mr. Kenny Reed. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tokyo Uprising. All right, we're gonna. 
All right, we're going to walk over here a little bit. We see some of them trying to skate this section here. We don't want to be in their I way. I think Coco's going to skate it right oh, now. Oh, Coco's going to skate yeah. it right now? So All right, while Coco skate it, while Coco skate it, let's talk a little bit about the obstacles that we see in the skate park, Kenny. Okay, so this part is, um, this is the Hollywood High 12 stair rail. And we went to, to LA and we checked it out and we measured it and we recreated it here in Tokyo. We also have the famous San Francisco Clipper Ledge, which is um, also it's, in California. It's huge. It's, it's really big, it's yeah. Really we big. actually, uh, we made it as close to the, the real thing as possible. And uh, this is an opportunity for the skaters in Tokyo to get to skate these famous obstacles for the first time. They don't have to travel all the way to the Cal California to, uh, to try their tricks here, so. That's true. I've never seen it my eye, in front of my eyes myself, but I'm stoked to see this and the yeah. way that everybody's skating it for the past couple days. Yeah. I mean, let's walk a little bit more uh, let's go. to his SI and see what, we, what else we have. Let's check it out. All right. I'm a very good friend of Kenny. I've met him since, when, when did we first meet? 1980? Uh, 1980. 85? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we walk a little, a little bit. All right. All right, so here we have the middle section. Yeah. And there's a double set over here. And that's, uh, that, we built that in, in around the famous uh, Shinjuku double set. Shinjuku double set. Which is set. in Tokyo, yeah. You and can't that, skate it anymore, no, right? No, right now they, they tore the spot out and it's a bust, so there's no more, no one's able to skate it anymore. So we wanted to recreate that. That's cool. uh, so skaters here could have that opportunity to try that. Yeah, for that's the first what I, time. that's what I realized. That's different about a lot of other contests that you guys. We have obstacles that are very famous in the skateboarding world, right? Yeah. We have the clip obstacle and we got the Hollywood 12 yeah. and a double set. Yeah, we wanted to take the spots from the streets and bring them to the arena. That's right. So that's what's super awesome about the contest right here. So going back to you guys. Right. Thank you very much, Mark and Kenny. For those not familiar. Kenny Reed, famously known as the Traveler. I mean, talk about somebody who logged miles around the world. He's been to every spot in the universe. He unlocked so many spots that he could write, I told him, he should probably write a travel book about spot hunting around the world. So props to Kenny for being out here this weekend. And props to Yuto for bringing these features to Tokyo. So let's take a look at a start list. We've got great skateboarders ready to go to work on this course. Designed and built also by California Skate Parks. They're doing great work everywhere. So this is the men's final start list. Momohe Yabushida from Japan will be the first skater in, just making it, followed by Jake Gallardi, Cordano Russell, Toa Sasaki, Daiki Ikeda, Sora Shirai, Carlos Ribeiro, Kairi Natsuke, Yuto Horigome, and the number one qualifier yesterday at a semis. Tommy Finn from Australia, absolutely incredible skateboarding from Tommy yesterday. Like nothing we've seen from him in a long time. So that's coming up later. It's great to see an absolute veteran out here qualify first. I know, that's for real. And as you mentioned in this list, Amelia, all Japanese skaters advance to the final. That tells almost the entire story. So first skater coming in today will be Miyo Itu, followed by Hina Maeda, Niko Sugimoto, Koko Yoshizawa, Nanaka Fujisawa, Funanakayama, Yumika Oda, Nanimi Unishi, Aoi Umura, and Rizu Akama. It's tough for me to get through all those names. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sure we're gonna be very familiar with all of these skateboarders anytime soon because if this dictates how the future of skateboarding is going to go which i think it will you know the, some of these girls that are here for the first time we're going to be seeing them in a lot of upcoming events this is the top qualifier rizu akama and she has a bag of tricks that's really distinct it, it really sets her apart a lot of barley grinds does big heels and just is really a smooth stylish skater yeah and you talked about becoming familiar with these skaters. But if anyone knows these skaters already, it's Amelia, right? I mean, you've been doing exposure. That's where they come to skate. You've seen them for years. Yeah, one of Rizu's first appearances was she did our virtual exposure event and she got second place in the video park competition. And she got to basically show her skills to legends like Alyssa Steamer and Alex White who were on the judging podium and they were immediately very, very impressed, and yeah. it's just great to see her 
be able to translate a video part into a live performance. Look at the level of difficulty of those tricks and so much variety. Now, one of the toughest parts of this contest would be judging it because everyone is so good. How do you rank them? Well, we're gonna find out. Let's throw it back downstairs to talk to one of our judges. I'm back again. This is Mark. But this time, I'm standing right next to the men and so, Jason. So, Jason, you are the head judge of today's contest, the finals right here. You've been here for the past couple days to see the skating that went down. Um, talk us through a little bit on how your judging process and what you're looking for in terms of like, judging the contest. Uh, it's a street contest, so we're looking for consistency, but really in a street contest in general, you're looking for progression, hard tricks, taking risks, uh, so it's kind of a combination of all that stuff. That's cool, yeah, and, and we can see the past couple days, these guys are stepping it up, right? Some of the things that we, we didn't see from the qualifiers, the semifinals, and today they're throwing down in big section too. We're seeing stuff that they're, they haven't tried yet, but they're putting it down today all on the line, right? Putting it down. He gets the final, so there yeah. you'll, you'll see some uh, probably more difficult stuff. But qualifiers was hard. That was this was one of the hardest cuts to make, right. both for the men's and the women's. Yep. So it's gonna be diff difficult. Yeah. From what you see, right, in terms of like the women's skating progression, like what what do you see with Japan and also everybody that came through for this contest right here? The uh, level of skating is yeah. actually getting pretty ridiculous. Uh, Four years ago, you weren't going to see uh, a front people down a 12-stair rail in a women's right. contest at all. Yeah. And now you're seeing kick the front board, front yeah. feeble. Uh, the girl Liz was doing front big heels up the step up yeah. and 270 lip slides. Not even close to seeing that within the last few years. Man, that's insane. Yeah, so going back to the booth right there. So there it is. Thank you. And another skater in the building, Jason Rothmeyer, legend, pro skater in the 90s, 2000s for foundation. Santa Cruz, uh, current current curb wizard. Let's take a look back. Some highlights from semifinals. This shows how we got here and how they skated their way into today's final. Hina Meda has a, such a cool style. I love that she was able to make the cut once again. The cut was really hard to make. So I was crossing my fingers for her because I just love watching her skate. Yeah, she brings a little bit more of a street vibe to the course. Uh, some, I mean, some skaters yeah. look a little bit more polished yeah. in terms of a contest yeah. run. Hina, more of a, you know, street skater skater. Coco, I haven't seen her before, and this level of skateboarding absolutely blew everyone away. She qualified first on the first day from the open qualifiers, and just her consistency consistency i think is so key here so it's it's just been great to see that go down right i i would say con consistency at this contest is more important than at any contest i've seen in recent memory because if you fall you are out how are you going to beat somebody that's doing the hardest tricks and staying on skaters like yumika has got it locked down absolutely i'm hoping we see her go for the kickflip from feeble she put it down Street League a couple years ago, and I think it's still the highest scoring trick at Street League in the women's field. Oh, uh, look at that back 5 -0. That was first try. Yeah. That it's was just first try. So controlled, not looking like it's uh, Hail Mary at all, just straight up. That front people was also first try. This is, I almost can't comprehend how they could just land everything immediately without ever having tried it before. Down such a large ramp. And there's the number one qualifier, Rizu Akama. She's, she said she really hopes to land the 270 lip in the contest. That's the one she's been working on the most. So now it is time to meet the skaters in today's final. Uprising Tokyo, supported by Rakuten. First skater in, Miyu Itu, just squeezing into today's final, qualifying in 10th place yesterday. Best finish so far internationally is fifth place at the Japan National Open. Second skater up, talking advice, strategy right now. Hina Maeda, she won the Tampa Pro Women's Open in 2020. She has her own skate park, so she's Definitely got time to practice. Nico Sugimoto, the 14-year-old goofy footer. 
She won Damn Am Japan Women's Final last year. No small task. Coco Yoshizawa, another young skater who's going to just keep getting better. Only been skating in international events since last year. And then Nanaka Fujisawa, the veteran at 21. Back in 2017, she won exposure 15 and over street. Funa Nakayama, one of the bigger names here in today's event. Olympic bronze medalist. What more do you need to say? Well, maybe you could talk about the front crook down. Hollywood 16. Yumika Oda, winner of Ex Exposure Street. 14 and under division back in 2014 and just keeping it going. She's got skills for days. Nanak, Nanami Unishi. This is only her third international event. She's super focused. We're going to see great things from her. Aoi Yumura, second place qualifier yesterday, winner of Exposure 2020, best video part and best trick. And then number one qualifier, Rizu Akama, the 14-year-old, currently ranked fifth in World Skate Global Rankings. Let's take a look at today's competition format. It's pretty simple, I like it. It's the old school version. 10 skaters each in both the men's and women's events. Each skater gets three one minute runs. Their best run counts. They're judged on overall impression in each individual, individual run. Consistent lines, of course, are the most important. Innovation and difficulty will also be rewarded. That's what's gonna get you your points, but you gotta stay on. You ready for this, Amelia? Oh, I am so excited for this. How about this? Any early prediction? I think we're going to see a lot of surprises because based on today's practice, they're trying things that they did not even try yesterday. So, yeah. you know, I, I think we're going to see some new names up on the podium. Could happen. I think experience may be a huge factor today too though for skaters like Yumika and Funa. They've been skating in these high pressure televised events for a few years. That helps. When it comes down to it, expectations are on. You got to know how to handle it. That's true, but I think in a lot of ways they have kind of home country advantage, you know? Yeah. So they got a lot of support here for sure. A lot of support, comfortable, and they're all friends. Like I was skating with them the other day and they're all just goofing around, like having fun. It's just a good vibe. So I think that, you know, if they stay in that good vibe headspace, yeah. it'll it'll take them far. How about you? Were you able to, to stay in a good vibe headspace when you're in contest? I had to force it. I had yeah. to force it. You just smile through it <laughs> and remember that skateboarding is super fun. Miyu Ito is in yesterday's 10th place qualifier. Look at that. We did not see that yesterday. The hard flip up the step up right after kick flipping the bump to bump. And then straight to the big section. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So clean. Back lip down Hollywood 12. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to mention that they're not exact replicas. They're they're inspired by. They're very close in size, but I heard the hubba's actually bigger. I heard that too. <laughs> According to Jamie Foy, he's claiming it's definitely bigger. Oh, coming off on the kickflip front board. Very solid run up until then. Might I remind you, she was on the bubble spot yesterday. This is the level. This is a bubble spot skater, which seems unheard of just even last year in a women's field. Yeah, as we make our way towards Tokyo or to Paris Olympics 2024, you're just going to see the skate levels just increasing, and it is going to be such a tough cut for the Japanese skaters to get there. Absolutely. That was a great start. We'll have two more runs from her. She's going to want to land that kickflip front board and stay on because, as we said, consistency is what's going to go really far here because I can guarantee you that these skaters are all going to land a really good run. But look at the control. That backside lip slide was just perfect. And this, that front feeble is probably the easier trick in her run. And the fact that she started off with two flip tricks in a row, she's clearly not... You know, afraid to take that risk. Whenever you're flipping your board, yeah. 
things could go horribly wrong. Scores in 74.01. Solid start. Hina Maida on deck. So the cool thing about her is she took an interest in skateboarding when she was 10, and her dad, who's a snowboarder, built her a skate park because there were no parks where she lived. And, you know, it's hard to skate outside of a skate park here in Japan. Yeah. That's important. I mean, I'm sure that's why she's here today. So props to supportive parents. Absolutely. And it's a place where she likes to invite a lot of people to skate, so not just strictly for her. Wow. She had to fight the landing on that kickflip front board, but she does it. Early in the run, too. Love it. Send the bar high. There's no, there, you know there's no holding back here today. You can't. If you want to make the podium, you're going to have to do a perfect run, and you're going to have to go all in. So that's what it seems like they're doing. Right. I think the judges might notice that she kind of missed trying the nose grind and went into a 50. So that might hurt her a little bit, but she's still staying on. So that's definitely key here. Oh, oh. until there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Hina. I did not mean to do that to you. She's doing it for Toy Machine, which is really rad to see her get that support. She actually won Tampa Pro 2020 and Damn Am Woodward. That's a, that's a tall order. Absolutely. And part of the reason Yuto wanted to bring this contest to Tokyo was to give all the Japanese skaters a chance to skate on the world stage, and they are taking advantage of it. Absolutely. It's definitely a beautiful contest so far in terms of just the level of skating that we're seeing. I mean, we're two runs in, and already it's looking like it's going to be a really, really good day. So Hina is going to look to her second and third runs for the score she's after. Planning what's coming next. But on deck... Nico Sugimoto. We saw Nico submit a video part for Exposure X. That was her first international appearance, so to speak, where she got sixth in a pretty stacked field. So that was a, that was a great way to start, and I think this is her first in-person international showing. And to make it to finals, no small feat. Loving that gap to 50. She charges. Yesterday, watching her. Oh. Taking a heavy slam on that heel flip. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Fully committed. She said that at the skate park, there is no shame in not being able to do something because she feels that skateboarding is such an, a supportive environment that encourages even the shyest people to open up. I think that's very true. Skateboarding is a great teacher of things. It, it being okay to fail and fall down. And she knows she was going to have two more runs, you know. In the moment, she's probably not feeling too hyped. But yeah. I think we're going to see a solid full pull from her. But you're right. If you can succeed in skateboarding, what, what could you not succeed at? Because we know, as skaters, it is the hardest thing in the universe. But it's, re it's the most rewarding, too, the most fun. I think we're all hopelessly addicted, so. Yeah. We'll keep coming back for more. Just looking a, a bit bummed. Hopefully she can shake it off. This is her first international showing, you know, so to have two slams in a row like that. I mean, she took a heavy one. So we hope she comes back for her second run. Back on track. Koko Yoshizawa. She next. surprised everybody the first day she qualified first in the first round of competition. Yeah. Out of 26 skaters, she comes in at 13 and whoops everyone and then finds herself today here in the final. Straight after it, backside lift slide. What a way to start. My goodness. She actually really looks up to Nanaka Fujisawa, who she happened to out-qualify today. That shows you how far that, you know, that supportive mentorship goes. Yeah, a little inspiration goes a long way. Sure does. I love that 
you could tell by her posture that she's already landed the trick in her mind before she gets onto the obstacle. Yeah, and she she packs them in. She's not wasting any time. It's trick, trick, trick. Doing the big spin out of the nose slide, the judges are gonna really like that, adding a little bit of technical flavor into the mix here. Heading towards Hollywood 12. Big spin wow. crossbar. Bolts. Oh my goodness, we did not even see her try that yesterday, or all weekend for that matter. That was beautiful. That run had it had you could say it had it all. Oh, it, is there anything she didn't do? I can't think of a thing she didn't do. You know, she did a couple technical wow. tricks. She did some flip tricks. She used the whole course. She did the, the biggest trick we've seen down that rail in this field all weekend. It, yeah, starting, starting off this with way, that. Too. Starting yeah. strong, ending strong, and then the whole run. No slide, 270 shove, perfect. Oh. That's gonna be a great score. She's gonna be hyped to put that down on the first run. Now yeah. she can kind of sit back and relax and think about all the other technical tricks she wants to sprinkle in there. Well, you were calling it. You were saying maybe one of these up-and-comers could take it today. That could be at 82.41. That is a massive score. I think, honestly, the judges are giving themselves a little room above that just in case. They don't want to get too excited. That could have been much higher, though. It could have been, yeah. I think... You know, they have to gauge the field, and they saw the practice, and they saw what everybody was trying. So they're keeping that in mind. Nanaka Fujisawa. She is a street skater, tried and true. It is hard to skate actual street spots out here, but she's put out full street video parts. She did send one in for exposure a few years back, which she plays super well, and she loves shove at 50s, and that's the trick she was trying to start with, but maybe kind of a big risk to start off. She did win the Japan Nationals Open Finals this year. So a, a raw street skater and can get it done in a contest. But you mentioned how difficult it is to street skate in Japan. It's because, like, it doesn't jive with the culture at all. People do not like it. If you're not a skater, you're looking at skaters saying, don't do what you're doing. Quit tearing up my lawn or property. Get off those steps. Which is cool that, that there are these replicas of yeah. famous spots here, including the famous Japanese spot, the double set. Oh, wow. wow. For the Smith. Things not coming together for Nanaka on her first run. But what's cool about this format, takes one run. Absolutely. And a minute is a long time. You could pack a lot of tricks in there. She's been skating since age six, and this is certainly not her first rodeo, so I'm sure she will put down a solid run to come. And, you know, like I said, starting off with a shove at 50, a little yeah. risky, but that's what you got to do in the finals. Right, right. It's all or nothing. Coming in next, Thrasher, cover skater, king of the frontside crook, Funa Nakayama. She actually did the front crook first try down the Hollywood 16. That's so messed up. Yeah. And she warmed up with a front board. You know, first try as well. Really? I never even saw that. That was just, uh, yeah, throw away. Yeah, throw away. Pretty chill. So here's the replica. I think this is the slightly smaller rail than the 16, this is the 12 rail, but. Yeah, this is this is uh, baby games for Una. Oh! Yes. The only one that's skating the clipper ledge in this field that we've seen. You know, it's interesting, because if you look at the rail next to the hubba, they seem pretty similar, but people are not messing with the hubba. It's tall. Yeah. It's like armpit deep. It's huge. Ooh, front one. Great trick yeah. with Una there. She is an Olympic medalist. She's no stranger to crowds. She knows she's got two more runs. Might be a bit of a throwaway at this point. She actually just had some clips come out in Nike's Gassed Up video. If you want to check out some of her street skating. All right. 
heading back towards the big section. Just give us a front curl. Pretty please? Right. Pretty please? Ah! Yes. Your request has been granted, front crook. Finish it with the heel flip. So not the run she was looking for, but finishing strong. You, you know, at that point, you're setting up for your next run. Put something down, carry that momentum through to run number two. Here's her starter. Front 5 out, chill and massive fledge. Wow. That is just poetry in motion right there. Level of precision to be able to lock in on that front toe. 62.71 for her first run score. She's got a lot more for her second and third runs. Yumika Oda in next. Newly appointed to Red Bull's roster. She won the Chimera Women's Final last year, so she can get it done when it counts, too. Yeah, I mean, Exposure was her first international event live in 2018, and she won that. So it seems like perhaps competing comes naturally to her, performing when it matters. She's got it pretty dialed. Look at that kickflip front board. So solid. Yeah, she's got a super clean style. Compact, not a lot of extra motion. She's just out there getting it done. Oozing with confidence. Definitely. Nice crook. She's packing a lot of tricks into this minute. Nice oh. kick flip back 50. Final trick here. Nolly oh, flip coming no. on. But that last ball shouldn't hurt her too much because it was kind of like an extra trick. It's not like a it's not like she headed towards the clipper ledge and fell on one of her main tricks. I always think there may be a difference in how the judges count against falls. But look at that. Front feeble like nothing. Wow, just the level of control. Oh, the flick. Perfect. Bolts. Wow, this is the nollie flip that got her. But yeah, hopefully not, not counting it too high against her. But let's see what the judges think. On the left of your screen, Daisuke Hayakawa. He is the coach of the Japanese national team. Thank him for a lot of the success of all these Japanese skaters too. He came to Tampa Am about six years ago with a handwritten note saying, hi, my name is Daisuke. I'm here to try to promote skating in Japan. Look at us now. 76.67. Winner in second place. Room for improvement. I think mostly because of the nollie flip at the end. Nanami Unishi. She is a twig and just goes for it. Don't let her size fool you. It's insane. She back 5 0 that rail yesterday, first try. And her back 5 0s have this beautiful, precise pinch to them. I hope that she's going to treat us to one of those. She looked more focused than anyone on the course yesterday. Just everything was dialed in, and she was going for it. Well, she's so new to the scene, you know? She's got to immerse herself in what it feels like to compete on an event that's of this scale. And she's definitely got, like, Eye of the Tiger vibes right now. There, there's no question there's a huge difference between being a great skater and then being able to put it down in a contest. When you have three tries and you got to make all your tricks in a row. Yes, that is what I was talking about. Thank you so much for doing that, Nanami. That was absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Backside flip. For good measure. Wow. Not the run she wanted, you know, coming off of that feeble in the beginning, but just a preview of what's to come. Yeah. 
If she puts all those tricks together in one run, which I think there's a good chance she will because we already saw her do it yesterday. Yes. That is an incredible. It's almost kind of like a salad grind, but. Right. It's got a very unique pinch to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that fall. That is that is a low a score. Right. Consistency is key here, and especially if you're falling on the first trick. Speaking of consistency, Aoi, I saw her skate in the qualifiers. She was holding her leg because she was in pain, but she landed everything. And she was okay, thank goodness. But to see, maybe she had a chart of her horse or something, but to skate through paint and land everything is so impressive. Beautiful backsmith. She qualified second yesterday. She did a front feeble down the Hollywood 12 first try. She just has great variety, Re really good use of the entire course. And of course, like you said, big tricks. Nice lip slide. She was in the lead for a long while yesterday. Finished in second. So when she won the best trick contest at Exposure, she did a heel flip front board down a double set about this size. Oh, uh, not quite getting it to truck and taking the slam. Full commit. Wow. These girls are all full commit. Yeah, that's true. There's no holding back here. And we know uh, uh, that's the way you have to skate if you want to rip, but easier said than done. Sometimes it's just too easy to jump off. And sometimes when you've just got jello legs because it's a contest and you, there's so much extra pressure, it's really hard to put it down. Number one qualifier from yesterday, semifinals. She placed third at X Games Chiba this year. So she's been on the podium before, looking for her first international win here today. Could it happen? I think it's highly likely. She's a very consistent skater. Like we said, she has a very unique bag of tricks that's a bit different than the rest of this field. And I think that if she can put it all together, she has a great chance at doing really, really well today. She just started riding for Flip, as you can tell by her Flip Sorry shirt, but a really cool addition to the team. Big expectations. She is in, clean. Solid way to start. Oh, that is so beautiful. The barley, it's just, no one else is doing it in this field, and she just does it perfectly every time. Nice arm feeble. Oh! Front big spin. The control on that. Absolutely. Taking it to disaster on the quarter pipe. She says there's not a lot of parks in her hometown and that she's kind of outgrown her local. Wow. Taking the barley to forward. Down the Shinju. That is the trick that she said she wanted to land here. She did do it in her run yesterday. And she's been working on it, so I'm really hoping that she can throw it in to her finals run. Look perfect. The floor is a little glossy, though. There's the starting feeble grind, and this high speed barley done to perfection. That is nice. so nice. The way she caught that, it's beautiful. Yep. 
A few falls in these last couple of runs. Holden scores down. Still good enough for fourth place with the 66.07. Take a look at current standings after first runs here in the women's final. Koko Yoshizawa up on top with a huge 82.41, followed by Yumika Oda and Miyu Itu, Ito rounding out the top three. And then the scores fall off pretty quick from there. And now we're going to take it back downstairs to Mark. All right, we're back out here on the course right here. I have the one and only Koko who is in the top for us right here. So I got Yuto right here. He's going to do a little translation for me. So Coco, you surprised us with that big spin front board. So what was going through your head doing that thing right there? Uh, Okay, uh, that trick is her favorite trick. Favorite trick, like, okay. And she wanted to, with her mind was like fully on, like had to do it in her head, and he just went for it. Go straight to yeah. it. Man, hyped to oh, know right. that you, your favorite trick is what you put down in the last trick, so we'll come back up to you guys right there. Let's go. Thank you. Run two coming up. I love that this contest is already producing what we anticipated, which is showcasing talent that we have not heard of or heard about or seen in a platform like this. And truly, they're already shining. One run in. Right. Putting pressure on the quote unquote veterans. The veterans aren't, aren't old here. They're still on their way up. So oh, I love that kickflip. So much pop. Oh no, just missing the hard flip. She got that in her first run. It's gonna be a bit of a throwaway run, but looks like she's gonna send it down the 12. Wow. So much confidence and authority going into that back lip. If you wanna get a sense of how difficult doing a back lip down that rail is, you can go to Hollywood. It's right there at the high school. You can skate it. It's the smaller one, still huge. Oh, kickflip front board, getting away from her this time. She started skating at age nine. She was a snowboarder first. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, age nine is starting to sound a little like a late bloomer these days. It's like, wait, you didn't start skating at six? You were you were skating when you were in diapers. I don't know. You might have missed your window. I think she's doing all right. I yeah. think she's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> she skates the Sagaya Skate Park, which is her local. Waiting on that score for run number two. So not improving, staying in third place from that first run score. It's a good spot to be in. She's got one more go at it. On deck, Hina Maeda. In eighth place. So she struggled a little bit on her first run. She's going to want to make up for it here. She's in. The way that she caught that, it just levitated up to her feet when it was done flipping. Her style is really something to appreciate here. She just adds a, a different flavor to this field in terms of the way that she skates, the way that she flips her board. And her pants are also great. Yeah. There's been some large pants this weekend. There's the back nose grind that got a little soggy on her in the last run. She said her favorite thing about skateboarding is that she gets to travel and make new friends wherever she goes. That is a huge plus. Hmm. 
So struggling again in her second run. Trying to move up from eighth place. Gonna take a practice go at the 12 here. Clean front side board. Consistency is one thing, but when there's such consistency on the huge obstacles, it always kind of freaks me out. I don't get that one. Just those, those things aren't meant to be consistent. Well, I think it probably hurts so much to fall on one of those <laughs> yeah. obstacles. You just have to force yourself to not doubt in the middle of it because, yeah, you will pay the price, that's for sure. So, Nico Sugimoto in 10th. Had a little bit of a meltdown on her first run. Trying to get it back together here. Run number two. High speed, gap up 50-50. She's the only one hitting that. Really cool to see for sure. Right, and that always got, as a judge, you gotta pay attention to that. Cause you know, it's something special. If only one skater is using it, points. Absolutely, a lot of skateboarding is interpreting your environment seeing it from a different light. So when people are skating just the same, same obstacles, doing the same tricks, it definitely is key to set yourself apart and to think about it creatively. Oh, not coming together for Nico here. You know, this is her first international appearance on this stage. Definitely takes some practice to be able to just put it together when it counts. And nobody wants to hear it, but honestly, failures are the prime way to learn. You think, you, it gives you a lot to think about. When you show up and you just kill it, you, you do great, you, yeah, good for you, but you maybe didn't learn some of the things that'll serve you well later. So to come out and fall on some tricks a couple of times, it makes you question what you're gonna do next time. It makes you stronger for it. Yeah. The, 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 the one thing you got to not do is let it get too far into your head, though. Don't That's let it, true. Don't let it freak you out next time. Easier said than done. Koko Yoshizawa, current leader, coming in next. First score was an 82-4-1. Blew everybody away with that big spin front board. Ooh. Oh, no, just getting a little front foot heavy on that back lip there. So definitely going to be a throwaway for her, but maybe she'll practice some of the upgrades she's got stored for us. She's even had a really nice push. Oh. It's interesting seeing a street skater wearing knee pads. That, it, that makes it so hard to ollie, to kickflip. It just feels strange, especially with pants on. Yeah, actually, some of these, the girls that are in this field that submitted video parts for exposure, it was all in knee pads, which none of us were able to really comprehend. Because as you say, it's harder to do. Yeah. And now that they've taken them off, you know, they've also progressed. So maybe in a way, it's like skating with ankle weights or something. It's harder. Right. And then you take them off and you're like, and oh, you're wait, I can ollie higher now. Nanaka Fujisawa in. Pop shove at 50-50 grind to start it, making it this time. Yeah, she said that's her favorite trick, and she's hoping to do a pop shove it from Feeble. So maybe we'll see that, but I think she wants to get a full pull. Nice Smith front 180. Oh, no. It looked like that 5-0 just kind of dragged a little bit on her. Yeah. Maybe needs a little wax on her trucks or something for the next go. But definitely check out some of her street parts on YouTube because she is a true street skater. And out here, if you're filming a street part, you got to be doing it at night, which adds so many layers of, like, bringing out the lights and the generators and whatnot. Yeah. Whoa, she was like backseat on the landing and then kind of got bucked off. But she's 
Going to look to her third run. Try to put it all together. There's a look at that pop shove at 50-50. Oh, barely. It's a brave way to start a run. It really is. So, an improvement in the scores, but staying in ninth place. Gonna have to land it all. Currently in fifth place, Huna Nakayama. You know, if she puts all her tricks together, she's always a threat to win. Now off we go, front 5-0. Right into the crooked grind. Her local park is Toyama Skate Park, which is also built by CA Skate Parks. So perhaps this has a similar feel here. Oh, Lots of plazas where she skates. Clean. Uh, Japan needs more indoor parks. Weather's kind of unpredictable out here, and uh, not too many indoors. Oh, is she going for cat back tail? It looked like that may have been the case. Wow. We're going to have to hope that happens in the next run for sure. Back lift, just powering her way through that one. Th this is like old faithful for her. Just go straight to the big stuff. Guaranteed points. Ooh. Oh, no. Wow, you have to be a ninja to get out of that situation. Oh, that looked painful. I think she's all right. Kaoda, waiting in the wings. She travels the world with Momiji Nishia and Funanakiyama. Talk about a squad. The contest killers. She just picked up a sponsorship with Sanrio, which makes Hello Kitty. So he might see some Hello Kitty stickers on her board. Which That's is fitting. So rad. She's in second place. She got second place at SLS Jacksonville last year. And at the Japan Nationals. She's due for a big win. Yeah, I definitely agree. She's had some clips in the Plan B video. Oh, wow, starting off with front feeble on the 12. Just getting away from her. So we've been hyping the consistency all day. We're not seeing quite the level of consistency today that there was yesterday in semis. That's a fact, but I think it's because they're pushing it. They're Bumping it up. Yeah, they're definitely adding tricks that we didn't even see them try yesterday. Like that, that was going to be the kickflip from Feeble. That would have been rad. And you're right. We hyped up the consistency. We're not quite seeing it, but it was almost like the pressure was higher yesterday, too, to just make the cut to the finals. And I think now they know they have to put it all on the line and tricks that they perhaps haven't practiced as much as the tricks just to get to today. And you're right. Most skaters will tell you that the process of getting to the finals is the most nerve-wracking. Uh, once, you're, once you're in the finals, you, in a way, you, you, you've won one round at least. <laughs> Kickflip going to Willie Grind. Uh, so she has one more run to try to move from second up into first. Will she do it? She says she's really motivated by Funa Momichi. She says whenever she sees them do tricks that she can't do, she gets excited to get to work. I remember Lizard King claimed one time that skateboarding is all about showing off for your friends. And that's kind of, that's <laughs> it. You're just showing off, trying to motivate them. They're motivating you. That's what it's all about in the end. And I love that. I love that. That's so true. All right. Nanami Unishi coming in. First trick. Feeble down the 12. Taking it from there. Clean. Stomped as well. Right? Nice 
lip slide. That's a seems like a short rail for a lip slide. Right. So you got to be quick. She really does stomp her tricks down. The focus, though, unmatched. She is here on a mission. Oh. Nice, feeble. All right, does she finish with something big? A trusty backside flip. See, we didn't see the back 5-0 down the 12 in that one. So I think she still has room to improve, but that was a full pull yeah. for her. So I think it's definitely going to be a higher score. She's happy about that one. All right, here we go. Feeble grind. And then already looking up. Where am I going? Wow, the style on that Smith. Yeah, right? That was awesome. Oh, so you know oh, what? we did see that. I, I, I'm so sorry. No, it was almost dipped all the way down to a feeble. I thought I almost thought she did two feebles. Uh, okay, so I think she, we saw the underside angle while she was doing it. Mm -hmm. It looked like a feeble, right? Wow, so that's going to be a really good score. That's probably the one that she wanted. She's like, I bet you're in first. I bet you are. That's what they're saying. She's like, I don't know. Yeah, judges are taking their time. I don't blame them. Jason Rothmeyer earning his money on this one. Good enough for second place, 80.46. That is a huge score. A huge accomplishment for her. I mean, this is her first big event. Amazing. I love, I love seeing that. The opportunity that's been created through this contest is coming to light. All right. All right. Uemura sitting in seventh place. We, we saw her put it together yesterday. And the day before. Yes. Trying to do it again here now. Starting with that front people this time. That's got to feel good. Set her up for a good vibe. Kind of a slow hustle there. It might be that whatever was hurting her on that first day, I'm telling you, she looked like she was in thorough amounts of pain. And she still landed a run, including going down the 12. She does look like she's moving a little gingerly. Ooh, oh, missed her back truck a little, but made it. She's a total sweetheart as well. I talked to her for a few minutes and she's just all smiles. Are you Clearly talk, serious right now. Talking through a translator or in English? A little partial English, partial hand gestures. Oh! Wow, the backsmith! Backsmith! Oh my gosh. That was actually on her list of things she dreamed about doing on that 12. She knew she was going to have the opportunity to skate the Hollywood 12 replica and she's like, I want to backsmith it. That's, That's probably first up. try. That was awesome. Props. Wow, that's something to think about for the judges for sure, because that was a solid run. Oh, beautiful. Textbook. <laughs> I love, I love that. See, that's what I'm saying. She's just hyped all the time. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors up there. I love that this field, everybody is, is really, really good, and you think they were just in training mode, but they're just goofy, fun, lovable. Like, they just have a really good time skating with their friends. So another tough run to judge. Aoi trying to move up that leaderboard, and you know that backsmith is going to go a long way. Yes! Launches her to first place with an 84.19. New leader, Aoi. Uimura. Oh, she is so hyped. That is wonderful to see. Especially seeing her first day, like near tears, just trying to power through that qualifier with in pain. As you said, walking gingerly a little bit today, but yeah. wow. But holding nothing back when it comes to even the biggest section. So the judges 
seeing that she's taking chances out there, doing things we haven't seen from anyone yet. That's amazing. So, number one qualifier from yesterday, currently down in sixth place, Rizu Akama is in. She's got more of a technical bag, so I think in terms of AoE's lead right now, that's one thing that might be missing. Big tricks, but maybe not as technical as some of the other ones that we're seeing. But we all know also, the more nervous you get, the technical tricks are the first ones to go. You're like, I could maybe Ollie right now, but clean flick? We'll see. Yeah. But these skaters have handled it so well all weekend. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, big spin. So good. I like that. Lead disaster. Just any any little variety on a quarter pipe, I feel like should should count for a lot. And so should that. Yeah, the bar lead forward, that's it's a rare it's one. Such a cool trick. I want to see it more. So thank you, Riza. Oh no. Missing the 270 lip. I know she really wants to throw that in there. Uh, so we know now that if you're trying to crack into that top three, you've got to start, you probably got to start with a hammer. You got to fill up the whole run with your best tricks and finish huge. So just full on hammers for a minute. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, that'll get you on the podium here. Maybe. Right, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the current standings after two runs here in the women's final. Aoi Uimura up on top with a massive 84.19, followed by Koko Yoshizawa and Nanami Unishi. Those are your top three. Yumika Oda trying to creep her way in there. These are all names that are not familiar You're right. to us. They're they're awesome. It's just great to see these individuals that have not had an opportunity to shine really taking advantage of this platform. And then Truly the, uprising. The bronze medalist, Buna Nakayama, down in seventh place. Hasn't gotten that full pull she's wanted quite yet. We've only got one more run to go. It's coming. She's got it. No problem. Saving the best for last. That's a good point. Back to the top of the order. There's our current leader. A lot of relief. Feeling good going to the third runs. Miyu Ito just squeezed into the finals. Now she's up in fifth place. No. Oh. Hey, shout out to that guy running around, getting her board right there. That is Mike Mansuri, absolutely legendary skate filmmaker, videographer, and a great human. Great to see him here. Working hard all weekend long, filming, editing, doing it all. Oh no, total throwaway from you. You know, her first run was pretty solid. You did see her step off on the nollie flip, unfortunately, but it's good recall. It's a good it's a good showing for her in terms of this being her first big contest. You know, she's been competing since she was 10, but on, not on a platform like this. She did say she hopes the hard flip the 12, so maybe she'll go for it. Oh! Yes! <laughs> she heard me. Oh. <laughs> Insult to injury right One there. One more try. Yeah, right? Do it for the people, Mew. That board was mad at her. Yeah, she sent it, though. That she was... Did. That was great. Full commit. I like to see these skaters have a good time out here. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody bail or not do their absolute best and, and crying or having a fit. But seeing everybody laugh it off, it's what you got to do. It yeah. is skating. Skating's the best. It's supposed to always be fun, even when there's pressure and money on the line. To be fair, though, it is hard to control one's emotions in a high-pressure situation oh, like this. Believe me. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. I know. I've focused a board in my life. I felt bad about it. Just it one? Happened. Yeah, I, I vowed to never do it again. I was like, that is not acceptable. There are kids There are kids who don't have skateboards. That is, you just cannot play a sport. Okay, back on track. Hina Maida. No. Hina, I really want to see a full run from her because her style is just so, so fun. I'm just 
glad we get to see her skate for 30 more seconds at least. It's great. Oh, just sagging on the nose grind. We did see it in the last run. Yeah, she's just been a little bit off today. And you know how, that's it. One false move and you're falling. It's hard to, it's hard to skate to perfection. Especially to do it three days in a row. Oh, there we go. Kicky front board. That may have been perfection right there, though. Yeah. So, heading for what here? Kickflip front board, maybe? Oh, kickflip. You know, we haven't seen any of this field just do like a straight trick down the 12. Yeah. Mostly using the rail or the clipper. She kickflipped in her run the double set wow. yesterday. And that's that's long, but it is nowhere close to how high that 12 stack is. And it, it's a 12. Underneath that Euro gap, there's um, 12 stairs. I'm gonna bust that out for best trick. There's the kickflip front board, stomping it. Smiling too, love that. I love people, like seeing people react when they land something that was hard, you know, instead yeah. of just brushing it off like it's got to feel good like embrace that feeling do you do that do you do fist bumps and hands over the head i mean i definitely smile i definitely smile hands over the head maybe not <laughs> i mean Keep i would going. if i could do this though yeah no that's true this is a different level all right 10th place skater trying to work her way up on her final run she's had some slams you know this is a, a big deal for her this is her first big showing and Nerves are getting her a little bit. And it, it's so important to, to pull it together and finish strong, because in, in some ways, you're thinking about how you're going to go into the next time you have to skate in front of thousands of people on live TV. The way that she did the backside flip a few, a few tricks ago was just so precise and controlled. And so far, this is her best run. Absolutely, she's making it happen here. Getting hung up on that front feeble. Maybe more wax on the trucks. You know, like you said, she's learning with every go here and still had a solid showing. I mean, she made it to the finals, which is no joke out here. No, this was the craziest final to make uh, possibly ever. And the first day, she actually qualified third. So she's had some really good runs this weekend. Yeah. It's just like you said, you know, you can't be on it every day. It's just. Yep. The body, unfortunately, doesn't work that way. Strikes and gutters, makes and bails. It's life. <laughs> I'm sure this is not the last that we'll see of her. This is just the beginning for her. Right. She's got a good 20 more years we could see her ripping. So there you go. Koko Yoshizawa, currently in second place, had a huge first run, trying to reclaim first place. Can she do it right here? Good solid start, backside lip slide like it's nothing. Yeah, she did the big spin front board. Down the 12 and her first run blew everybody away. Ooh, Ooh trick flip. flip. We didn't see that today yet. Stuff like that that got her into a first first place qualifier. Oh, hanging on, just barely catching the edge, like the last inch of that rail. Yeah, that rail seems pretty short, but they're making it work. Oh, That no. could have been it right there. That could have been the difference between this being the winning run. But we know now this is not going to be it, unless she does something absolutely mental right here, which she may. She looks focused, that's for sure. Biggie front board. That may have been even cleaner than the first one, which I didn't even think was possible. Yeah. Just looking so controlled and confident. So that was definitely the trick that launched her up into first originally on her first run, but after a fall, it's not it's not gonna reclaim first place, yeah. I would guess. She might be able to stay on the podium with that first run, but you know, there's still a couple more skaters to go. Anything can happen. Risky. There's a lot of rail. You got to, you got to get into that trick. You're gonna pay. But perfect. Just straight to the feet, onto the rail. 
You know what she does when she's not skating? She is making sweets. Can really? you imagine like throwing yourself down a 12 stair <laughs> handrail and then go, that hurt, I'm gonna go make hey, some candy. You gotta balance it, right? That's true. So. She looks sweet, so it's fitting. All right, Naka. Naka. Let's Nine go. Place. Naka, she's gotta put it together here. It's, it's been an improvement uh, from run one to two. Now it's all got to come together here. Boom, nice start. That was the cleanest one so far. Beautiful shove at 50. She looks very relaxed. Yeah, just a, just a really great street style. Smith, 180. Halfway through this run. Oh, oh, oh. She was just she definitely was not locked. No cross lock. No, it was back no. and forth. Wiggle lock. She was trying to <laughs> she's trying to hang on to it. Fortunately, no full pull from Nanika here today. But she's gonna she's gonna do something rad down this rail, I think. Oh, that was a Smith go gone horribly oh, wrong. That's the last thing you want to happen is to slip out on a Smith and land back seat, squash your ankles and knees. She handles it. She's just laughing about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, these girls are resilient. They're taking some heavy slams and just walking it off, laughing, giggling, fist bumping. Warriors. <laughs> Who am I piecing out? <laughs> Not close. So on deck, Funanaka Yama will be coming in next. Olympic bronze medalist. She's the only Olympian here in today's women's final. So she's a... Uh, Seasoned. Oh, I just heard over the, the PA, it sounds like she may not be taking her last run. I don't know. What a shame. Well, we're happy that we at least got to see the front crook. She gave the people what they wanted. But I do hope she's okay. Yeah, good gift. All right, Yumika Oda. Doing it for Red Bull. In. Oh, no, just missing the front feeble. Wow, we're going to have a major just upset with this podium in terms of new skaters. But new you faces. called it. You called it. You said you expected that to happen and you're dead right. Well, I have been watching all weekend long and, uh, you know, I'm always rooting for the dark horse. You know, everybody's got to have their day. I like that you make a, wanted to give us a kickflip front people because she knows that we want to see it. You know, there comes a point in the contest where you're like, ah, I'm that, just going to do the trick I really want to do. Cause... Does she know we want to see it down the 12? Oh, should we tell her? <laughs> Call her real quick. Speed dial. Well, it doesn't come together here in Yumika's last run, unfortunately. But that essentially guarantees a newcomer podium. Still have, still have Rizu, few runs still left. Still Rizu, though. That's... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nanami. She's been skating really well. You know, this is one of her first big events. Like you said, looks very focused. All right, can she do it again? She's sitting in third right now. Pretty, pretty great spot to be. But she knows Rizu's still coming up. True. Sending the back 50 down the 12. She's got to put it all on the line here. She's got any chance of beating what could be Rizu's best friend. You got nothing to lose. That's very true. I mean, she's already won in a way. Absolutely. Lip slide on that short rail. Used to be an iconic spot in Tokyo, but it's been since torn down. Nice front Smith. 
you know, I was checking out her Instagram, and all of her captions just say, happy. <laughs> oh! Not going to improve on her second run score, but that's okay. Now it's going to be up to the remaining skaters. Well, specifically Rizu. Specifically Rizu, because Ao is sitting pretty right now. She's got a guaranteed podium. So current leader on deck. What, what else could she do? You know, I'm not sure. I think she's going to surprise us. I think she knows. I mean, like I said, she has done heel flip front boards downstairs sets that are about this size. Uh. Now, helmet malfunction. That's what happens sometimes with the helmet hat situation, you know? Yeah. You get extra tangles. But it's a big thing out here. It's real serious. You got to have the hat and then the helmet. <laughs> this is taking a lot of time off. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, she knows she's not going to do any better at this point, yeah. and she's already in a wonderful spot to be in. But what can you do? You still got 20 more seconds of cameras on you. Nice comeback. All right, beautiful back lift. You know, I've seen a lot of interesting cafes out here in Tokyo, but not a cow cafe, and that's all I can think about when I look at her pants. Like, is there a baby cow cafe out here we can go to? Tell us about the, the cafe you're going to tonight. All right, all right. I'm, a, I'm going to a micro pig cafe. I'm very excited. I'm going to cuddle with little piglets and uh, probably feed them. All right. So Aoi is not going to improve on her second run score. May not need to, but it's up to Rizu, the final skater here in the women's final from Uprising Tokyo, supported by Rakuten. Sixth right now, because she just has not landed a full pole. I mean, we know she has a bag of tricks that is a bit more complex than the rest. Oh, wow, major upset out here at Uprising, but living up to the name in terms of giving new skaters an opportunity to shine. Yeah, and once again, that was Yuto's goal. Yuto co-produced this event essentially with Rakuten. And, and the goal is to bring the spots and bring the attention to Japan where, where he thinks it belongs. And he wants the Japanese skaters to have a showcase for their skills and talent. And they have capitalized on it in a huge way. It's cool to see. All right, because the thing that really separates this event is that some of these other events, they're either invite only or there's a, a limited quantity of skaters per country. But, I mean, we all know that there's so much talent in Japan, but now we get to see it. And I just love that this opportunity just came to fruition and supported these girls that maybe don't get a chance to compete for the Japanese team or don't get an invite to the X Games or the Street Leagues. And there Amazing. is our winner, Aoi Uimura. Skated through pain on the first day and made it to the top of the podium in the finals. It's incredible. <laughs> Love it. True underdog story here for this podium. Let's take a look at the full standings after women's final. With Aoi Uimura up on top with 84.19, followed by Koko Yoshizawa and Nanami Unishi rounding out the podium. And then Yumika Oda finishing there in fourth, followed by Miyu Itu, Rizu Akama, Funanaka Yama, Hinamaida, Nanaka Fujisawa, and Niko Sugimoto. In any way you slice it, all these skaters had to do a ton of great skateboarding to be in this final today. Absolutely. Then, then the pressure comes down to staying on. And when you speak of pressure, you know, in a lot of ways, 
veterans have more experience with that kind of pressure, but they weren't able to bring that experience into play here today and actually was the rookies, the ones that are new to feeling this this level of skating, you know, this I mean we're in an arena. We're we're broadcast live all over the world and they, right you are. And now we're gonna send it down to Mark who's got an interview with our winner. Oh man, look at who I got right next to me right here. We got the winner right here. Aoi, how are you feeling? I'm real. Unreal? Well, talk us through the whole mindset towards coming into this contest right here. You saw that Coco was leading the, the whole contest earlier in, his, in her run, but what made you pull through to put together your run earlier too? To that first place. あの、ここが1位でずっとまあ、1個目のランで、ここが1位だったけど、その後何を考えて自分のランをやったの。まあ、ココちゃんはスケーターの中でもめっちゃ仲良くて、大親友みたいな感じだったから、ライバルでもあ
There's a look at this California skate park's designed and built course. The men are on the course warming up. A few huge names in skateboarding still to skate. Yuko Horigome being one of them. Yeah, and you know, like we talked about, this was the brainchild of Yuto. He wanted to partner with Rag10 and make a platform for Japanese skaters to shine. He says he wants to leave a legacy on Japan, in Japan and just build more of an avenue for more skaters to get some exposure. He's doing a great job. And here is our start list for today's men's final. Momohe Yabushida from Japan will be the first skater in. Followed by Jake Gallardi from the USA and Cordano Russell coming in strong yesterday. Toa Sasaki, Daiki Ikeda, Sora Shirai, Carlos Ibero, Kairi Netsuke, Yuto Horigome, and the number one qualifier from yesterday. The veteran out here, Tommy Finn, absolutely smashing it. We're going to see a lot of different styles and different approaches to this course. And it's going to be really interesting to see basically how they add that technicality and that consistency into play. So there is Yuto Horagome getting ready to skate this final. Coming up very shortly, but first, we are gonna send it down to Mark. Down right here, every time I hear Paul's voice, send it down, I'm getting myself ready. Right now, I'm just going to give a little update on what's going on down here. As you can see, all the big names are out here getting to practice on. We got our number one qualifier right here, Tommy Finn. He was here early this morning, too, to get his practice on. I didn't see everybody else, but he was here first. Now we got Yuto out here. We got a lot of other people. We got Daiki right here as well, who's been killing it the whole day. Right? So right here, I'm going to talk a little bit about with Kenny, right? Man, about... Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming back on, Kenny. Yeah, sure, no problem. Right, so we could see from the wow. women's section, right, the yeah. Japanese women skaters had taken over the whole they are. list right and there. Now we got some of the Japanese guys, so a few of the best in the world right here, right now. So talk us through a little bit on how you see J the Japanese skateboarding has exploded the past few years. So right now in the finals, we have 10 skaters, and six out of the 10 are Japanese. And two of them, I think, are fairly unknown until this competition, so it's really exciting. Um, we have Toa Sasaki skating here, Kyra Natsuke, and then there's Tommy Finn from Australia. Yeah. We have uh, Carlos Ribeiro from Brazil, Jay Calardi from U.S., Sori Shirai. That's true. Like, it's good to see that there's a little bit of a mix over here with the yeah. movement section. We got all the Japanese girls on here. Right here, we got guys coming from Brazil, Australia. A little bit of mix from from the U.S. as well. So I'm in, I'm in, I'm very hyped to see what's gonna go down after after this thing right here. So, Me too. man, a lot of things are going down. Crowd are coming in. So, I mean, let's see. What do you think about? the whole thing that went down with the women's section. Are you surprised with what you see? Especially uh, with the names that, that we usually surprised. don't hear, right? Yeah, the top three are not well-known skaters. So, That's true. Um, it's, it was interesting. The top three are all under 15 years old. There was a 12-year-old uh, and two 14-year-olds. So that's... Right. Really Very young skaters have been killing it. It's, yeah. it's a surprise for all of us, too, especially when we see things that they, they weren't even doing during yeah, practice. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. One of them learned a trick two minutes yeah. before the end of practice and then landed in her run. That's true. Uh, hype to see what the man's gonna put down. Yeah, me too. I Let's can't get wait. it. Cool. Back it, baby. See you guys up there. It's great to hear from Kenny. Yeah, I mean, he is the brains behind this course as well, so props to Kenny. So we are talking about earlier how there's, there's, there's legends actually on the course today versus upstarts. It's going to be an interesting final. But first, we caught up with Yuto to get his take on how this event came together and the course design. Let's check it out. ライジングのコンテストは、ま、今回楽天 
まあ、日本のスケートボードシーンあのもうすごいレベルが高いと思うんですけど、まあ、そういうどんどんこれからあの上手くなっている子たちが、まあ、この大会に出てそのプロスケーターたちと世界のトッププロスケーターたちと滑れる機会は本当にその子たちにとってもすごいいい刺激にもなると思うしすごい楽しみにしてます。Cool to see those spots being recreated. The, the Shinjuku double set, unfortunately, is no longer around. But you can go to Hollywood High to this day. You can go to Clipper, get, get some work done.、Um, they've been around forever. Hollywood High, 12.、Uh, Pat Duffy, first skater to ever do a trick,、uh, at least coverage wise. Front 180 fakey nose grind. Have you been to Clipper or Hollywood? You know, I've been to Hollywood. I haven't been to Clipper,、yeah. but when I pulled up to the arena and I saw how big the Clipper ledge was, I, I was, you know, it really contextualizes all the tricks that you see in the video parts because when you see something in person, you know,、yeah. and I imagine that the actual Clipper is just way more terrifying. Right. It's gritty, right? Frosty,、yeah. for sure. Now let's take a look at some of what went down on those obstacles yesterday in men's semifinals. Mamahe, this is the kid. He just squeezed in. So when he was skating,、uh, there, he was in 10th, and Ishad was the one skater who could have bumped him out of the cut, and Ishad didn't get it done, and Mamahe is in. All right, Jake a l a r d i he's just in beast mode 24 7. Right, and when he's not skating here, he's skating vert ramps. He's an all terrain legend.、Uh, and Cordano is everybody's best friend. This is the nicest human, and he, he tends to skate the course the wrong way. Like, he skates up almost everything because he's got that beastie pop. And when he's skating down stuff, he's doing stuff nobody else is doing.、It's、yeah. Great flavor to the mix. And then Toa. Toa's been on an absolute tear. He is. He's following in the footsteps of Yuto and Sora in a big way. So is Daiki. Daiki just won Tampa Ham. He's a, he's a machine. And you said he's got that, that heart flip that just keeps on giving. That heart flip. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it's like three times the length of Yuto if you were to lay down. Look at that. Sora. Sora. He was the first one to sort of take that, that Yuto model and run with it, making up tricks,、um, putting down just crazy tricks, and just heater moments. Yeah, when he's on it, watch out, because it's going to be amazing. Carlos Ibero, switchback 5 0 Clipper. He really brought some poetry to the table yesterday. Yeah. You know, he had two runs. Good enough to make final. That's, that's really saying something because that semi final was heated. It was hard to make that top 10. Guys who put down full good runs did not make it. So. And then Kaidi brought his heel flip into town and just put it to work. Backside big flip down the Shinjuku double. And then Yuto, I felt like there had to be so much pressure on Yuto yesterday just to get to the final because the, the level was so insane. And he just kind of breezed his way through doing such hard tricks and making him obviously look so easy like he does. And Tommy, wow, he really blew everybody away. I mean, this is the veteran, certainly the oldest skater out here this weekend. And, you know, just skating with such. Yeah. Youthful approach, you know? Look at to that. To be able to skate that. It's a lot of impact on your body. And you know what's kind of cool is、um, the Shinjuku double set, one of the most, one of the most famous tricks down, done down it was Nate Jones, Fakie Trey flip. And so it's almost like Tommy had a tribute, Fakie Trey down it in this contest. I wonder if he knew that. We're going to have to ask him. You know,、out. I feel like he probably planned that out to pay homage. So he was the number one qualifier. He's going to be last to skate today. All right, now we're going to send it back down to Mark at the Skateboarding Hall of Fame display. Take it away, Mark. Test, testing microphone. Mark is back on the mic, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. Although I failed my history in, in school many, many times, but、well, we are here in the Hall of Fame right here section. We have 
the section where we have all the skateboard that has been produced in since the beginning of time, right? So I'm going to show you guys a little bit on the different evolution of a skateboard, right? I'm not a good hi uh, history teacher, but I'll show you guys. We show over here, we got actual skateboard that came out from from the Hall of Fame Museum what's right the, here. What's too. the first year we got there? Where were we year? looking at? First decade. All right, 1950s. I wasn't even born. 40 years, and then I will be born. But right here, I guess this, you can see, is the first skateboard, which looks like a scooter, okay? And they, they don't even have actual wheels. These are metal wheels that they're using right here, but they got grip tapes. They're okay. round. Wow. wow. Over here, Market. right here, is, dude, this is basically the beginning of how skateboarding being produced, right? You see people are hammering in the wheels in there with the trucks that they use. I th I'm, I'm guessing this is from like some trolley, all that kind of stuff, and put it on woods and stuff. That looks really hard to ride. It is. I, if I get, you can, I, can I try this? Do yeah, it. no. We dare you. No? I don't know. I, I might get fined from the Hall of Fame, <laughs> the museum, all that, but I'm not going to write it. We're going to move on to the next age. We're in the 1960s, right? The title is The Rise and Fall of Skateboarding. I did my studies, okay? So, be, yeah, so it didn't fall, it went, it, it kept going. We got some kids right here who are interested. So, obviously, over here, the reason why it's being those called clay Rise wheels. and Fall. Yeah. Th these are clay wheels. We got some, the ones that they use metal still, right? So, obviously, you can Roller see skate. there's not too much change in here. So, people started to see people are interested to, with skateboarding, with this thing, right? So, people started to produce many of these things, but they don't sell because they million. don't hold on. Yeah, well, there are death, death traps. Million. You're like, you're rattling along and you stick on every pebble and in every crack. So then That's true. we're waiting for the 70s to kick in. Come on, give us some urethane. 70s, baby. This is when things started to change, right? Yeah. You you have these wheels right now. Come closer, camera man. Show them what these are. Polyurethane wheel. Okay, my Beautiful. English is my second language. It's perfect. But, yeah, but the wheels much better, right? People have started to change. The look of a skateboard started to change a little bit. From a piece of wood, it goes on to something that looks like an actual skateboard that we see nowadays. Slowly changing, right? We got the Z-Boys in that decade, right? Yeah, that's right. So you can see in the in the Z-Boys time, right? Riding these type of Shogo skateboards. Shogo Kubo, see. then. Well, we're going to go on to Shogo soon, right? Oh, okay. He's, Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to skip ahead. It's, it's okay. It's okay. decades, you know? Yeah, You're just yeah. getting excited about yeah. Shogo. Because, because I'm excited to be like a teacher, you know? I, my history teacher, I didn't, I'm not too good with history. So I want to be a history teacher with skateboarding, although I'm not too good at it. Here, but, but we do have Steve Caballero and Hasoy coming up. That's true, yeah. So this section right here, you can see a lot of things have changed with skateboarding. This is when skateboarding, uh, street skateboarding has come into the picture a bit more with, with the shape of skateboard being different. You can do more tricks on it, right? And then ma big magazines that, uh, that came out, Thrasher, started being produced on, on this time, right? Thrasher, Trans Wool. We've heard of that. Bones yeah. Brigade. Yeah. You, you ever heard of that? As well, huh? Many things. Bones Brigade, right? A lot of things. I wasn't born here yet, so if I got some facts wrong, my oh, bad. You're nailing it. All right. All right, so 90s time. 90s All right. This is where street time, skating okay. really kicks in. Oh, yeah. I was born around this time of the decade, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not skating yet. But as you can see, the shape of a skateboard has completely changed from the beginning over, all the way over there, cameraman. Look over there. All the way to this. It looks so different. We got popsicles. But, yeah. I see Mark Gonzalez down there. I, yep. there's, a, there's a blind board up there. Blind yeah, yeah. switched up the game. The skull and banana. Everything yeah, is coming laughing. out of yeah. this decade right here. Jason Lee. Into the 90s. But um, I'm going to pull you guys all the way back here. This is the skateboarding history of the world, basically, right? But we're going to pull it back right here a little bit over here. Since we're in Japan, right, we got to show love to one of the legends that I'm pretty sure everybody knows and should know we got the section for shogo kubo the legendary shogo kubo do you guys you guys know who shogo kubo is yeah he's a, he a z-boy Z lord of dogtown born, yes. born in japan the first pro out of japan right that's true that's true right yeah. didn't, uh, didn't his soy learn from him that style is everything man that's true like we, we even got a section that that has a quote of him saying that style is everything so he pretty much played around with all this thing and over here, come on, cameraman. We're going to show a little bit. We got a little bit of uh, note on there for you guys to know what the Z-Boys are. And a little bit of tribute to Shogo Kubo himself right here, too. Well, that's a sick photo right there. Talk about style, right? Hey, let's shout out Let's right shout there. out Glenn Friedman. The, I, I, he's the photographer on a lot of those yes, photos. Sir. And they are, they are absolutely gorgeous. Yep, yep. Bryce shot that photo right there. 
Props Bryce to Bryce, Bryce right there. Too. Yeah. The lights. And okay. shout out to Shota Kubo, who made this possible. He helped bring this here and, you know, in partnership with the Hall of Fame as well. And Kenny Reed. They all helped put together this, this beautiful display of skate history. Everything right here is for you guys to see. So this is what we have right here to show you guys. All these are real. But we're going to push it back to you guys out in the booth. Thank you guys for hanging out with Teacher Mark. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Great All right, so skateboarding has evolved. Certainly. The, the, the boards and the tricks. But it's not ever going to stop. And so Matters Apps is on the scene with Skate Tales, and he's finding out what might we be skating next. We'll see. Let's go. I hope it's not clay. This is a yoga ball. It's comfortable. With no shoes, it's OK. Tell me. Yeah. Is this skateboarding? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Mugen no kanose. Mugen no kanose っていうのは誰もこれはスケートボードじゃないとは言えないと思うよ。多分。Never seen anything like it. But it's a genius idea if you cannot push. Use some sticks. Matters knows how to have a good time. I, I love the Japanese skate culture, though. It's, a, it's, it's definitely the whole spectrum. Um, but you, Amelia, first board, what was it? Oh, my first board was an Andrew Reynolds birdhouse. Ah, nice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Show, that, that shows you what decade it was. But, uh -huh. Uh -huh. That was know. 1990. Two, 1990, 2001. But, yeah, that was, that was my first board. So okay. it was a popsicle, you know, but now I've actually started to skate shapes that are a bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. with a more squared off tail. So, yeah. you know, I'm dabbling a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, that video just made me want to go like, take a cruiser you board down the wild. street, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, we got men's finals coming up very shortly. But first, we caught up with Jamie Foy and Ishad Ware to hear about their take on Japanese skaters and skating this course behind us. Five years, Japanese skateboarding has definitely just taken off, skyrocketed. Yuto is kind of like one of the first in the sense of like competition wise, like coming onto the scene and then just showing everyone what's up. Now there's a bunch of other Japanese kids all coming to the scene and they're killing it. Definitely have known about the Japanese skate culture, but I feel like it has taken off to a completely different plane now. I feel like they're leading. Their young talents are absolutely mind-blowing. The Uprising Tokyo contest so far has been so much fun. Watching the kids go crazy in there, and the, the course is a lot of fun. Me, Ashad, and Shane, we were all talking about it like, man, like, this is just a fun skate park to hang out at and skate. It does have the gnarly section, like the big gnarly section with the 12 rail and the hubba. It's pretty big. When it comes to the whole skate park, like, it is a lot of fun to skate, and it's got a good flow. So it does give you a sense of how talented the Japanese field is because Jamie Foy is here. He skated semis. He didn't make it to the final. And same with Ishad. That says pretty much everything you need to know about what we're going to be looking at today. It was a heavy semis. It was, crazy. It, it was very serious. So it's going to be rad to see what happens today. Like if they can step up the level from yesterday, I mean, that's that, going to be incredible. That may not be possible, <laughs> but we'll find out soon. Let's take a look at the start list. First skater in today is going to be Mamahe Yabushira. 
from Japan, youngest skater in the final, followed by Jake Gallardi, and then Cordano Russell, Toa Sasaki, Daiki Ikeda, Sora Shirai, Carlos Hibero, Kairi Netsuke, Yuto Horigome, and Tommy Finn. That is a solid final. That's, that's like a good variety of skateboarders. It's six Japanese skaters, two Americans, an Australian, and a Brazilian. We're going to see a lot of different styles here, a lot of different approaches to the course. I think we're going to see a lot of creativity and some unique tricks that, you know, maybe we haven't seen yet. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Cordano skate again. Oh, yeah, Cordano's. He, he gets the crowd going. He's having fun, too. He's dancing. Yeah. If, if, like, Manny Santiago's not around to do that hype thing, it's good to have Cordano here filling in that blank. Yeah, it's clear he's uh, just grateful for every moment, and, you know, that gratitude is really pushing him forward. I mean, to make this final, it was it's a huge deal, and Cordano hasn't been in that many big contests like this one. Right, because he's been an amateur, so you don't all, always get the opportunity. It's an invitational sometimes, and if you don't get the invite, you don't get to skate, but Gordano made it out here, and he's in. That's Momahe, youngest skater in the final. He might be tripping in his mind right now, but. We even saw Felipe Nunez earlier on the screen. He yeah. had a really good showing here in the open qualifier. It's just rad to see him, out, see him out here handling that 12 stair rail. And if you missed any of the skaters here, you can check out Uprising Tokyo on Instagram. Get everything you need to know. See all the clips from the skaters. There's Carlos Ibero cruising his way into today's final. It was pretty amazing watching him skate yesterday. That's a switch backside 50. So skaters are warming up still getting ready for this final. Um, so the talent level in the semis yesterday was so nuts, as we've mentioned. And then Yuto was one of the last few skaters to skate. And I was, you know, there's no guarantees. I don't care how good you are on a skateboard. When you have to do your best skating in front of a crowd live, things can go wrong. Yeah. He, he, he put it down so easy, though. And he looked so relaxed. Like, yeah. he looked like he'd just woken up from a nap, you know? Yeah. Maybe he was going to roll around. And he just put down some really solid runs. And it looked like he was working up to some tricks that he hasn't done yet that we might see today. I mean, his signature trick is doing something we, we've never seen before. So I hope that happens today. And it's funny, he designed or had a big part in designing the course and choosing the obstacles. And we heard Jamie Foy earlier saying how he thinks that 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 Clipper is actually way bigger here. Way bigger, he said. Like, but Maybe Yuto got there and said, listen, Clipper's too small. Can we just make a slightly bigger one? But as Ken Kenny Reed said, he went out there and measured them. He measured it. And they tried to build it to scale. And um, I don't know. But I like that they uh, turned the 12 stair into basically a two-way street, you know? I mean, you can see the stairs underneath it which means that it just adds to the flow of the whole course because right. then you could skate up at like a Euro gap. I've even seen some of the dudes skating the top part of the clipper ledge and even the top part of the rail, which Cordano was skating. I mean, Cordano skating this course absolutely differently than anybody else out here. Well, he's, he's twice as big as everyone else. He's like a giant and he has giant pop. He can ollie up Clipper. So he tends to like board slide up the rails, 50-50 up the hubbas. Um, he's the nicest dude, he's always having fun. Always smiling. Yeah, and he even told me that sk just skating that 12 stair feature, he said that there's a rule, if you're over 100 pounds, it's really gonna hurt. And clear, <laughs> clearly, he would know. He's like 105 for sure. At 106, maybe. And another thing, this is his first trip outside the US, straight to Tokyo. And you couldn't come to a better city. Come on, Tokyo's the, it's the best city. Amazing. Yeah, every time I've talked to him, he said he's been going on adventures, checking out Shibuya, you know, getting into all kinds of like, just fun out here. Situations. So. Situations, hard flip situations. Hard flip situations. <laughs> that's right. So the crowd is coming in here for the final of Uprising Tokyo, supported by Rakuten. 
treat for them to see Yuto performing live. He's been traveling so much and doing so many events internationally. He's got a huge fan base out here. Yeah, and after the Olympics, he didn't skate an event for a year. He took a year off where he was just kind of... Filming. Yeah. He was filming. Not Put putting himself parts. under that kind of pressure, showing up under the lights. But yeah, getting tricks. The, the <laughs> Nolly 270 switch back lift down Hollywood 16. That's worth, that's, that alone is worth a year off. Yeah, and maybe an extra medal just for fun, right? <laughs> and now it's time to meet the skaters in the men's final. Uprising Tokyo, Momohe Yabushida from Japan. Youngest skater in the final. Finished in 10th. And then Jake Alardi from Florida, USA. I talked to him earlier. He said this is his favorite street course in a long, long time. He loves this course, and you'll be able to tell when you see him skate. Cordano Russell, as we've already talked about. Amateur skater, seventh at Phoenix Am this past year. And then Toa Sasaki, another amateur. He won Damn Am Japan last year, which was similar to this. You can imagine, he smoked everyone. Daiki Ikeda won Tampa Am. I mean, come on, that's it. Once you win Tampa Am, it's, come on, it's time to go pro, Daiki. Sora Shirai, another Tampa Am winner. Um, he won the SLS Tour Qualifier 2022 also. Carlos Ibero, absolute Brazilian legend, one of the smoothest skaters you'll ever see. Street League pro for many years. And then Kaidi. Netsuke, winner, another Tampa Am winner in Kaidi, and then Yuto, Olympic gold medalist. That's all you need to know. And then he can win and does win everything else. And then yesterday's number one qualifier, veteran out here, Tommy Finn from Australia. He's got South African roots, roots as well. Let's talk format. 10 skaters. In the men's final, each skater gets three one-minute runs. Their best run counts. They'll be judged on overall impression in each run. Consistency is big, but what it all comes down to in skateboarding is innovation, difficulty, and just flat out ripping for points. So do all that, you have a shot at it. I think we're definitely gonna see a lot of innovation here today. They're taking lots of unique approaches at these obstacles and I'm just psyched to see what upgrades they might even have in store because I was already blown away yesterday. All right, those are the fans inside Ariaki Arena here. This was a site of the Tokyo Olympics in 2001. 2021. Oh yeah, 2021, thank you. Lost a couple of decades. It does feel like it was a really <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are ready to roll. Momahe. Yabushita. I just saw this uh, barracks feature on him uh -huh. where he had to hard flip, back flip everything at the barracks uh -huh. in a line. In a line. And I'm pretty sure he did it first try. He just, everything. That's the new the style. The 10, the 6. A frame. Is he gonna start with one? Oh, I think that was gonna be a kickflip backflip, perhaps. Not the best start, but he gets three runs. And this is his first huge international competition where he's not just skating against amateurs. Yeah, he got third at the Dam Am, eighth at Tampa Am. But you're right, skating against some pros, legends. Uh, not coming together on his first run for Momahe. You know, when you miss that first trick, 
it's really hard to get any sort of flow going. You're probably just still thinking about the fact that you missed that first trick. There was a nice hard flip. No, I agree so much. Very few skaters can overcome that. I always point to Kelvin Hoffler as somebody who can, who can fall and then come straight back after it and not miss a beat. But most people... There's definitely like a mental judo involved in just being able to recover yeah. when you miss a trick in the middle of a run. But at this level, at this finals, if you're missing a trick, you're, you're not making podium. There's no way. You're probably right. not even making finals. So that first run and the score will be a complete throwaway for Momahe. Jake Alardi, 26-year-old regular footer from Florida. Winner of Red Bull Roller Coaster two years in a row. And that contest was crazy. And that was like right up Jake Jake Alardi's alley. Because he can skate at all. He's an all-terrain vehicle. Yeah. He's a, he can do make perfect McTwist on a, on a bird ramp. I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it. Like first try as well. And he might be the only skater in this field that has his own holiday. He's got a Jake Alardi day in Sarasota, Florida. I did not know that. Yeah. I want to go to it. I mean, I'm not sure if there's like a festival or anything, maybe a session. That everybody has to big flip front board the rail before it ends. I think that's, those are probably the rules of Jake Lardy Day. And then you have to 540 of her ramp. <laughs> Switch back lift. And there's a documentary in the works right now. I don't know if this is, um, if I can put this out in the world, but I'm Jake Lardy. Wait for it. Being made by his twin brother, who's a filmmaker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Filmer and. Skateboarder two. All right. Time for one more. Another really cool thing about Jake is that he really put in the work to help better his local park in Sarasota. And he helped make it skatable. And he's like, he continues to go there and make sure that things are up to par, make sure the ramps are good, things stay, you know, maintained well. And that's, that's huge to, to be able to bring that back to your community and, and help it thrive. Speaking of thriving, I think that is Coronado's weekend so far summed up. This dude is thriving. Thriving everywhere he goes. Look at him. He's like, it's a beautiful day. I love it. Love my life. I'm 18. I'm in Tokyo for the first time, skating in my first major international pro-am event. I'm ready to go up this double set. For his first major international event, he does not look stressed. No, he doesn't. Going up the handrail, up the hubba. He's the only one doing that. Boom. Thank you, 50-50, down the hubba. Oh! And so yesterday in semis, he was fakey front-nosing down that, that handrail. This time he tried to fakey flip into it, or was he fakey flipping into a front board? I'm not sure, but we'll see. Still 30 seconds, still to skate. But it's clear he knows that he's got to do a bit more than yesterday, which is why he threw that flip in, into that. Because you're right, he was just doing front nose yesterday. Oh! Mamalu! Nolly back, big spin back lip. Made famous by Galea Mamalu back in the day. King of that trick. There we go. Rookie grind up Hollywood. I'm telling you, he's going up everything. Yeah. You know, just, that's just his first run. He's got two more to go. He does not look stressed about it. He knows that it was a big deal just to make the finals. And he's here. He literally, his flight got canceled. And uh, so by the time he flew in, his practice had just started. And it was as though he had just, you know, been here all along, no jet lag or anything. Because he was immediately grinding up everything. If, if you've never been on a 17-hour flight to straight to the skate park it is it, that is impossible right yeah you got airplane legs your ankles are all swollen You're like what planet am i on all right toa sasaki winner of damn am japan last year he just placed second damn am la last weekend and here he is in the final what he's so good it's psychotic what a way to start his run just power and 
speed, stopping everything. That is an authoritative way to skate. Yes. Cruise up through the front, feeble. Nice backside nose grind on the quarter pipe to set up Blaze in the crook. Woo! The Gons grind. Front 180, faking 50. Look at how much time he still has. He's already done 50 tricks. Oh, flying! His hat didn't even fall off that time. It fell off every other time he did that. Front one on the quarter pipe. Time for one more. Back nose block! That wow. run! That was incredible to just come out the gate and put that down. He must be feeling very good right now. He could just sit back and watch. That He could win this contest right there. Look at this bigger spin flip front board. First trick in. Wow. And then it just didn't stop the whole run. It got a little loose right there, but no worries. Technical and fast and powerful. I mean, all the things that judges want to see in a skate style. Yeah. Look at back nose blunt down the hubba. That run had everything. It really did. Wow, I wonder. I mean, I feel bad for the judges. The contest is just starting, and they got to figure out, you know, how to score it. They have to kind of anticipate what might come next. 85.12. I mean, technically, I, I wouldn't have a problem if that score was a 95. But we, we got to leave room because Yuto Horigome and a lot of other insane pros are on the course. That was beautiful. And this kid, Daiki Ikeda, winner of Tampa Am last year. He's a, he's a machine. He can, he can skate very similar to what we just saw from Toa. There we go. Beautiful tray flip. I love the way he caught that. Uh. Long kick flip. I love when they throw in the flavor on the quarter pipe. Oh my god! <laughs> Cat back tail, big split. No, and that rail, as we talked about, it's short. How do you have time to set your feet up to do that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Bionic feet. Seriously, technical precision. Oh, oh there it is. my gosh. The hard flip situation. The hard flip situation. It had like a little shifty there that time, it looked like. Just the way that he caught it. So right. gracefully. Does he have time for one more? What's he gonna do here? Oh! Mm. Oh, ah. you know, I think that might count against him because he said time right when his tail popped. Yeah. You know, but. And he's up against Toa, whose run was perfection. Yeah, it's flawless. It's so that's flawless. it. That, that, that's, that's the difference. The judges are gonna look towards those types of things to give him an out. It's to true. And Toa skated really fast. So he packed a lot of tricks into a minute. But, I mean, he packed a lot of tricks into one trick, so. <laughs> and then this. I mean, but wow. choose your poison, that hard flip or the back three. They're both just insanely beautiful and amazing. Beautiful, yes. I definitely, definitely agree with that. So that's the new generation of contest Ooh, skaters. Wow. This is just first runs here. We just saw Toa's score pop up. Not sure how Daiki scored on that one, but yeah, I think that, oh, there we go, 83. Yeah. 83. Big score. It's a big score. And knowing that he missed the trick at the end, you know, he can, he can definitely get way higher. Sora Shirai. When we first did Damn Man Japan, he won it two years in a row to kick things off. And he's kept it going ever since. Oh, oh, no. Did you know that he threw the first pitch at the Chiba, Chiba Latte Marines baseball game? I did not know that. Yeah, just a month ago. 
That's and apparently right. it was a perfect strike. I bet. Did he did he cavalarial into it? You know, oh! I <laughs> what? I've never seen that trick ever. That was insane. Whoa! about recovering after a fall like yes. to be able to just pull that out his smile on his face says it all honestly okay that was those tricks were were the tricks that could win this contest but they're gonna have to happen in a better run they are but you know almost incomprehensible what he is doing here to that those two tricks back to back were psychotic wow the the score I mean, he could still get a good score for doing that stuff, but okay, oh, here we go. Gosh. The weirdest way, front 180 fakie grind to 180 out, and then this. Nolly big, big tail, big spin. That is, I mean, a Nolly big tail, that's, that's an amazing trick. And incredible, wow. mind blowing, uh, jaw dropping. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm still trying to pick my jaw up off the floor because that's, my brain is still trying to process this information. All right. Carlos Cibero is like, do I have to go next? Yes. Uh, he's got, he's just got such an awesome flow on this course. Starting right there. Oh, switch. Now, here's the approach that's different. Much more casual, less tricks, but everyone is just a banger. And everything is so well done. Even though he kind of sagged on that and went to no slide, it still looked good. Yeah. The, just the casual look of his approach. It, it just, it looks easy. It looks yeah. fun and easy. It looked like we should all be able to do it. But Yeah, it's even easier switch, he says, <laughs> right? He's just got that vibe about him. Yeah, might as well. It's like looking like a walk in the park for him. It's so chill. What? Oh, Nolly flip. flip. Oh my goodness. Switch back to. This is like a fully switch run here from Carlos. His, you know, his signature move, I guess, is just doing the hardest trick switch. In a really calm and controlled manner. Right. Wow. Great work. So that was the only issue with that run was just kind of the sag on one grind. But this switch, switch back, back five. Oh. Here we go. Crook that. across, down to no slide, and then he pops it back up. Gets a little toe drag, but that's a make. Yeah, that, that was fun to watch though. He just saved it. Switch flip, back lip. Incredible. Nolly flip crook. That's, I mean, that's what it takes these days. Imagine having that run planned out. Hmm. He's got to feel good about that. Yeah, he looks pretty happy with it. How does it stack up to Toa? Ooh, oh, first place. Your wow. new leader, 87 even. What would it have meant if that crook was fully pinched flat and down? So. If you're thinking why, it's just the switch. I mean, everything he did is switch and insane. That's why, right? Absolutely. Kylie, heel flip, front oh, board, wow. 12. This guy's a heel flipper for sure. His, uh, his zero video part is so good. He does the greatest laid back big spin of all time. Check that one out. I hope he throws one in his run. I love the late back big spin. Oof. Taking a chance, going for the nolly inward heel front board, not quite. Rocking that boy band hair. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Was that heel back tail? Yes. Wow. Big spin out. My goodness. Yeah, again, talk about a recovery. Oh. Right, to, to know that, you know, you haven't made a run, but hey, I'm just gonna go for this anyway. And to be able to pull out such technical tricks like that. Yeah. Amazing. 
So yesterday, he actually put put down his run that got him into the finals on the first run. He said he didn't want to get too comfortable knowing that he had three runs. So he, he said that he wants to just take big risks today. And he said he's going for the win. It's good enough for fourth place for now. 61.6. The falls hurt bad. In next, second place qualifier yesterday. Doing it in a very casual fashion. An Olympic gold medalist, Yuto Koragome. Incredible. Even that, that back tail up there as your setup trick is impressive. How many people could do that trick in a run? Very few. And I think they're probably all from Japan. <laughs> they're all on the course right now. Yeah. Oh, classic Yuto. Cabs and everything. Okay, what do we got? Okay, leaving the door open. Nolly 270 backboard coming off. He's gonna have to look to his second and third runs. Well, Yuto. he knew that he had to take some chances and put it all on the line. I mean, any run can be the winning run at this point, but you gotta put it all. You gotta put every trick down. He did a lot of a lot of great stuff. Nolly 270, switchback tail. Just those three tricks we just saw alone are just huge. Yes. But, Video part worthy for sure. But you hand the judges an excuse when you give them a fall or two. And they're gonna take it because they need the excuse. There's nothing else, there's no other life raft for them to cling to. Fourth place for Yuto right now, 80.81. Still a good score. Not where he wants to be, however. Tommy Finn on deck from Australia. Number one qualifier yesterday. He's a veteran. We haven't seen him on the podium in a while, so. He took a, a major break after 2019 and was just taking it easy back at home. And then he came back in full effect here the last couple, of, last year, essentially. But it all came together for him in the semis. He certainly kept out skating himself with every run yesterday. So far, it's looking like a really solid run. Not good. Whoa. Make you heal. Yeah, you know, Tommy skated so good yesterday. The question is, is it, is it possible to do that two days in a row? You know, it's like he was magical. And pressure's high when you're the number one qualifier. Wow, kickflip crook. That's almost like straight back nose grind. It was so well done too. Yes. He looks very pleased with that. So apparently he he lived in South Africa first, then moved to New Zealand, then Australia, then the U.S. So definitely a well-traveled individual. You know he uh, he could have claimed South Africa and tried to get to the Olympics, but he didn't do it. He skated for Australia, didn't he? We're gonna have to check some notes. He may have. But it was a, a tougher path, regardless. Yes, definitely. Current standings after 
first runs here in the men's final. Carlos Ibero putting it down and getting it done with an 87 even, followed by Toa Sasaki from Japan and Daiki Ikeda rounding out the top three, doing their country proud here. Yuta Horigome just outside the podium right now. And before we kick off second runs, we're gonna send it back down to Mark, who's with Cordano Russell. Guys, I'm down here with Cordano. I'm not gonna go too crazy with these questions, but I just wanna know how you feel, man. I've seen you smiling this whole time coming out here. Tell us how you feel, bro. Bro, feel super great, man. Just super blessed to be here, man. Just the whole experience has been activating and just, I'm just here doing my tricks. You know, it's my very first time here in Tokyo, Japan. And everybody is super amazing, super dope. People like you, man. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Thank you yes, very sir. much, man. Yeah. We're hyped to have you here. Thank and you. we look forward to see what you're going to put down for us. In yes, a sir. Bit. Keep having fun. All right, back Later, to you guys. guys. See? You. There you go. Such a positive dude. And he actually just graduated high school. And he's going to USD for college to study business. Smart dude. Smart dude. Making skate business work right now. That's right. Mumahe on deck. He's in 10th place. Struggled big time on run number one. That doesn't mean a thing. It's hard to be the first one out. Yeah. Back on track. Kick flip back lip. Oh, just missing the kickflip back tail. See, some of the other guys have experience with recovering, and clearly he does as well. You know, missed the trick, but still doing the kickflip 50. Oh, going for a shove out of the big flip front board. Trying to step it up. He knows he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, if, if, if you fall, then you gotta, you, you're you gonna have to come back with things that have never been done. That kick with back tail sagged on him again. Maybe the pants sag is kind of bleeding into the skating. Dripping into the <laughs> skating, if you will. <laughs> well said. Oh, going for the signature hard flip back lip. All right, it's gonna come down to his last run. He's just a kid, though, you know? Yeah. He's got, got Plenty time. Plenty of time. Decades. And next, Jay Gilardi. His last podium was a second in the USA Nationals. But aside from that, the podium's kind of been escaping him in these international events. And I mean, for him to just make it to today, when I talked to him yesterday, he was like, I cannot believe I hung in there. But it was a, it was a tough cut. So. It was such a tough cut. But he is, he's, a, he's a run skater, you know? There's the different formats. I think this format suits him so well. You give Jake three tries, he's gonna make a full run. Just where's it gonna end up? Yeah, and he skates fast with a lot of power. Love that back from 80 fakey 5 -0. Oh, switch back lit. The stop factor is crazy. And the hustle factor is high as well. Nolly knows one. Definitely a stronger run so far. Going for the big section. Mm. He's been big spin front boarding the rail every try, trying to step it up. Not in a flip in there. It's looking disappointed, but as you said, he's a run skater and he is a seasoned contest skater. So he knows he's got one more try left, but one try is all it takes. Best run counts. It's the beauty of the format. It's a solid cap back lip. Gonna come down to run three for Jake Gallardi. And the man, Cordano. Setting the vibe, setting it high, being grateful. Gotta love it. He looks so calm. 
nice front court up the handrail. I like how skaters with that much pop can unlock spots that don't exist to the rest of the skateboarders. That's a very good point. It's the Brandon Westgate phenomenon. Oh no, just missing that. He's, yeah. he's going for it, right? He's going for it. He's, he knows he's got to upgrade yesterday's run. Yeah. He's in front board. He's still smiling, though. That's what you got to love about him. Always in a good mood. Oh, not quite this time. Yeah, not quite. He landed that yesterday in his semifinal run. Ah, oh, kind of losing it here. His board looks like a mini. I asked him if he wanted me to say anything about him. He just said, I want to inspire the lost to use their time, treasure, and talents. There he is using his talents right there. He just did it. That's a crazy one. Nolly shove backboard. <laughs> yep. I want to see that all, the, all come together for him. Me too. I mean, in a way, it has, you know? It's his first international event. He's made it to the finals. And he's skating against the Olympi Olympic medalists, gold medalists at that. That's a true story. Now, what's in Toa's mind right now? He just, he did an insane run. Mm -hmm. Is he thinking? He's thinking, can I go faster? Yeah. Fit more tricks in. Can I do that back three bigger? <laughs> I mean, what does he do? He, he did so much. You can't do a bigger than a bigger spin flip front board. Or can you? <laughs> he probably can. Oh, gosh, what a way to start. So much can go wrong. Okay, now a heel over that bump to bump, clean back tail. Right, what's he got for us? Time check, tons of time. Oh, that's a heavy move. Not a heel front board. Yeah, so that's going to be the upgrade right there, there yeah. <laughs> Just a quick, uh, beautiful tray flip to recover. Got to love that. Maybe he's going to try it again. Oh, no. It's going for the back three, probably. Yes. The control is outrageous. Lost the hat that time. That's all good. That just shows you like how much speed and boost you get from that gap. You, you cannot keep a hat on. No, it's, hat, it's a hat losing situation. There it is. First trick, bigger flip from board. Just perfect every time. And the feet in motion there. See, the fact that he keeps his feet so solid on his board mid back three, I love seeing that because usually like feet kind of float off a little bit here and there, but not for Toa. 64.1 on that run. Obviously, he's going to stick with that first run score. As we move on to Daiki Ikeda, strategizing here. So Daiki had a nearly flawless first run. Got him into third place. Finished just a little late and with a fall. If you finish with a straight hammer on Daiki's first run, it could change the game. Starting with a back 270 lip down the 12. Yes. Flawless tray flip. You know, the question is, is what regular stance tricks can compare to what Carlos did switch? You know, that's a good point. So far, just he's going regular, he's going fakie. But I think Daiki's got to throw in some, some nolly or switch here if he wants to get bumped up to first and make a full run, which it's not looking like that's going to happen right here. <laughs> every try, every try. I have not seen him miss that yet, which just is incomprehensible. It's not right. It give, it's, it warps one's perspective of what skateboarding is. Because it's, it's, I can't believe it's that. Right, and it, 
it's it's hard to explain to someone who hasn't stood next to that gap in person, but it's a long way to travel. Yeah, it's massive. It's just like a gigantic launch ramp. Oh my gosh. Fatty to flatty. So that's not gonna bump up his score. He had a couple falls, unfortunately, but he's got one more run. Sitting in third right now. Sora Shirai on deck. He broke our brain last run. He did. If he can if he can put that together with no falls, watch out. Yeah, when Sora's on, it's it's a game changer for sure. I'm always shocked at how narrow Sora's stance is as he goes into some of these tricks. Wow! Oh my goodness. That is heavy way to start. His heels yeah, are his feet are so close together. Yeah, back. Whoa, whoa. Did he catch his truck? I'm not yes. sure. But yeah, that wow. was insane. Yes. Sora, not messing around. No, definitely not. Yes. Oh. oh, my goodness. He's the best in the world at that trick. Almost, almost made that happen. Still, a great, you know, almost full run there from Sora. That was a unique run. Just Very like, unique. what are you gonna get? Just flinging the craziest tricks. Things that don't seem like they would even work. He makes work. Cat back lip. That's the most basic thing he did. <laughs> That's. That's crazy. Okay, he, he went for the sugar cane, but oh, the didn't sugar cane. get sugar the truck on. Cab, so Cab overturned back lip. But this, to straight fakie grind, wow. that, is, that is rare indeed. I don't know what's better, come out fakie or just keep it going. Either way, I, they're both good. All right. So an improved score. Fifth Bring place. Bring up to fifth, yep. That's only good enough for fifth here so far. <laughs> doing like six tricks no one can do. Right, imagine if he puts down a full run next one. Carlos Sibero, your current leader, coming off an 87 even switch god. Oh, just missing the first trick, the switch back 5-0. You now he left home at 16 to pursue skateboarding in Barcelona, leaving his homeland of Brazil. It worked out. Yes, I would say it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun with it at this point. It's also a father of three. I'm sure that his family's home watching. Super proud of how he's skating. At least in his first run. In another one, nicest human on the planet. <laughs> Willie Fibo? Is that what's happening now? That's funny, but also, I dare you, go ahead and try it with Willie Fibo. Right, that's, that's the level of control on that. Yeah. Props from Aimu and the crew. Yamashita, Shane O'Neill, Ira, Curb Killer. What a squad. Shane got hurt yesterday, unfortunately, so wasn't able to take all of his runs. And that's why we're not seeing him here today. But he's going to be all right. Kaidi. Seventh place, coming off a 61.6. See, he, he'll put front board at the actual Hollywood as well. Why not? Yeah, why not? Is that Tampa. Pat Heal? Yes. You know what? When he won Tampa Am, that was one of his clincher moves. Big cab heel on the quarter pipe. And I was like, yeah, that was my question. Was that a cab heel? 
That's wonderfully bizarre to just have on lock like that. Right? On a quarter fight. But honestly, we saw a little bit of like what the mini ramp skating out here is like, and it's it, it doesn't even make sense it's how high the level of skateboarding in Japan is. From another planet. It's not even another country. It's like from I don't know where. It's obscene. Laying it out in his head, trying to crack into the top three. Preferably a win, a lot of pressure on his shoulders. This is his event, co-produced with Rakuten. He designed the course. I'd say with that, he's already won, you know? He's, he's made this event happen and created a platform for unknown Japanese skaters to shine. But of course, we do want to see him land a good run. <laughs> wow! Doing that the hard way. Stomping the tray flip. Whoa, hanging on to the Nolly three. Got a little loose there. Oh! Just catching the edge of that, that like, last inch of that rail. Yeah, once again, the rail seems like it, it ends pretty abruptly. Now it's just that switch back tail. Still time. How does this measure up to Carlos's run? Even no falls, a little sketchy. Trick, trick for trick wise though, level? It's pretty similar, pretty comparable. I think it's all gonna come down to this. Oh no. That's gonna, that's gonna seal. His fate for run two. No improvement. Yeah, Carlos definitely still in the lead after that one. So he's going to have one more crack at it. As we know, though, that's all he needs. That's right. I mean, that's how he won the Olympics. Just he landed a couple really amazing tricks. Yeah. I always feel like he's better in the format with the best trick section. But come on. He can put down the lines of doom for everyone. He just did it at Tampa Pro. I mean, it was, it was insane. He just did it yesterday as well. Yeah. All right, our number one qualifier. Tommy Finn trying to recapture some of the magic from yesterday. Wow. Nice trick with no slide. That's a signature Tommy move, too. Backside flip, fakey nose grind. If he's not making that, that means he's kind of off his game. Uh, he left himself some pretty big shoes to fill from yesterday. Yeah, high standard. Yes. Beautiful, fakey heel. Down Shinjuku double. Very nice. All right, this one is going to save it. Smart move. Second runs in the books here at Uprising Tokyo. Getting a pep talk there. Just do what you did yesterday. Yeah. Just do what you did yesterday. Easier said than done. Here's our leader, Carlos Rivero. Cruising. He looks so relaxed. Maybe that's the secret. Just got to relax. Take a look. Current standings after second runs here at Uprising Tokyo. Carlos Ibero up on top with an 87 even, followed by a stack of Japanese skaters. Toa Sasaki, Daiki Ikeda, Yuto Horagome, Sora Shirai, and then Jake Alardi squeezing in there in sixth for the USA. Everybody trying to make the top three. 
if not bring home the win here this weekend in Tokyo. I think that the level was so high yesterday. Everybody knew they had to be incredibly consistent to just make it to the finals. And today, everyone's taking those runs that were already some of their top runs from yesterday and then trying to step them up. So, you know, maybe not seeing the same level of consistency today that we did yesterday, but that's just because if they're trying to make things better and better, upgrade all their runs. You're exactly right. Carlos, Nolly Flip Crook, doing it all, taking a switch down Clipper. That's why he's your first place skater right now with one run still to go. Could all change, but it's gonna be tough. Definitely gonna be tough. Anybody trying to take him out is gonna have to do nonstop hammers to perfection. Momahe, youngest skater here in the final, trying to put it together, sitting in 10th place. He's looking a little stressed because he hasn't landed a run yet. But maybe this, no, well, won't be the one. I'm sorry, Mama Hay. You know, he's still got some time. Maybe we'll at least see a hard flip back lip. He's got that one pretty dialed. He's kicked with back lip. Kickflip 50. Yes, big foot front board. Coming together for him. Yeah, missed the first one, but definitely recovering. Nice hard flip. It's always tough, though, when you know after that first ball, the writing's on the wall. You're not going to get where you wanted to be, but you got to fight through, and he's doing it, doing a great job of it here. Hard flip, back lip not happening, and that will be it for Mama Hay. Amazing feat just to make it to the finals today. It's been a crazy weekend, you know. He's skating with some of his heroes, and just just to put down the stuff that he did land, Indeed. it's good to see. And like you said, it's a learning experience, you know? This next right. one, you'll be all the wiser. You know, at 14, you don't need to win yet. Maybe it's good to learn a yeah. few tough lessons. Yeah, you gotta work for it You can't bit. just have it all that early. Speaking of a dude who's worked for it. For real. Jake puts in the work, for sure. All right, he's in sixth place. If he can stay on, he can move way up, but that is not happening for Jake either. It's like everyone has used up their consistency powers right. from yesterday and the day before, honestly. I mean, it, physically, it's exhausting doing this day after day for sure. And then the emotional roller coaster of having to get ready to take these runs day after day, and you, you came all the way to Japan to do it. Right. Money's on the line, your family's at home watching, cheering you on, hoping you can do it. It's taxing. Right. And there's probably a sense of relief when you've known you've made the finals. You kind of like take a, take a deep breath. Right, maybe, maybe take your foot off the pedal a little bit. Right, maybe you get a little too relaxed though. Huh? There we oh. go! Jake Alardi, big flip front board fakie. Ah, oh, and he's never gonna miss a blunt flip fakie. So it's still the best run that we've seen out of Jake today. You yeah. know, not a full pull, but a really good showing from Jake. Indeed. Oh, he's still doing it for he's, the people. He's got a second and third win here. Oh! Nose grab Baker, back maker. three. Yes. Count it. That's got to feel good. And then you you know he's thinking, oh, I want to make that first drink. If only. That's the curse of the contest, you know? You're always going to think about, ah, oh, that one time, like four years ago. I could have just done that one other trick, <laughs> could've right? Could have changed my life. Uh, I like how he takes the big flip from board to fakie, though. All right. Yeah, Wait still solid showing from Jake. Definitely making Florida proud. Right. 
Cordano. So it looks like Momahe moved up. Bump Cordano down at the 10. Every try going up all the obstacles. I wonder if he's going to continue with the run that he's been trying the past two runs with the flip. Yep, he's going to flip into it again. Oh, no. You know, he was landing that without the flip this whole weekend. But, you know, you got to respect that he wanted to just do better, right? Because every day you skate and you want to do better than the day, the day before. Yeah, and you don't want to do do a perfect run and end up in eighth place or ninth place. Right. You know that if you would have tried harder, you could have potentially won. Oh! Oh, the double hand drag. I felt that up here. That yeah. may have caused a small Tokyo earthquake. <laughs> That's a good point. Beautiful great flip. The power is unmatched. life out here he's got a whole like vibe check thing going on instagram and it's like a like a feel good report on what's going on but i feel like this guy's always like a got a feel good report in general good for him I yeah mean, you could all learn something from that i could benefit from that. So yeah, great. Vibe check myself life's just better with that mentality i feel like just be grateful right toa I love this look. He's like mega focus. Had a great first run. Not the best second run, but he's going to go for the upgrade here. Three out of three in the final, starting with that trick. Straight in this nollie heel. Could not be done better. That tail was picture perfect as well. So does he come back for this nolly heel front board? I think he will. Yeah, because he has to. That's he's got to. Unless he's got something else, but okay. Here's the setup. Oh! You know, you got to respect that everybody's trying to really up their runs from yesterday. They know, like, they, ha they have to risk it. They have to go big if they want to make the podium. No safety runs out here. Not today. Oh! There it is! Nolly Hill front wow. board. Down the Hollywood 12. Talk about winning fans. That's right. I mean, you can see that's like legit appreciation by the world's best pros. That's got to feel good. Yeah, there comes a point in the contest where you're like, I just want to do this one trick for me because I know it's going to feel great. And he's blazing through wow. that. That's what I really appreciate about his skating is he goes really fast. Me too. It's it's like kind of got the perfect technique. Style, speed, power, great trick selection. Yeah. He may be the, the, the perfect man. Aw. <laughs> well, we definitely saw that in the first run. He put it all together. You know, not going to bump him up because he did have that fall. That but score, that should be higher than a 67. Not that it matters, but come on. Right, but it wouldn't have been higher than his first score. I know, though. I know. Just, just a general principle, but I feel it's it. fine. But you know what? Sometimes you do, you do it for you, not for the score, right? The yeah. Yield front board. Fair, fair. All right, Dikey. He's still someone that could take this whole contest. 70 lip, strong way to start. He didn't do the big spin out of it. Yeah, maybe his feet just weren't set up for it. Oh, missing the switch crook. Did he get into the switch crook? He did before, but you know, it still looked good. It did look good. So But when you're trying to when you're trying to take down Carlos right now, whoa, that looks so amazing. 
this thing finally falls on the biggest hard flip of all time. I know. So not going to be Dyke's best run. There you go. Can't go back to a shove. That's like my favorite combination of tricks in one trick. In my dreams, I hope to one day do something even close to that. I back you it's on that. It's beautiful. It it's is. beautiful. It's like the feet, the feet continue like through one motion to get that trick done. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot to learn. So apparently his favorite skater is Ashad, who did, did not qualify for today, but he said he got to skate with him recently and he felt more nervous than if he were skating a contest. And he did not want the day to end. That is sweet. Super sweet. Soda. Sixth place. I just want to see him put all these crazy tricks together. Me too. I think everybody does, honestly. Right, of course. If, if you're a skater, you do. If you're just not and you're here, then maybe you don't. You might just get confused yeah. trying to watch. I mean, everything he does is, is a bit mind-bending. Oh! I think he might have locked into it that time. I don't have to check Under a replay. Sugar. I heard something. I heard a dink. Biggie front board, Fakey. He's doing it. Yeah, feel like very he's solid. Building up to something. Oh! <laughs> Here we go. Oh! I, I don't even understand what happened there. I think he was trying to nolly Biggie to tail again. Oh, I and see. Then he but he got over to board. Okay. Slide. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's. Better. I mean, his first run had the, the most mind-boggling tricks in it, but none of his runs were full pulls. So, oh, oh yeah, it was a, it's a, it's a little area. sugar there. No man's land. Uh, the, you know what was wrong with that run? I mean, the end. It just it it fell apart right at the at the end. Unfortunately. And, and and at this point in the game, the judges are looking for an out, so they take it. Hey, you, you you fizzled out. Boom, we're giving you a 60 on that because we can't be bothered trying to figure out what to do with all those crazy makes. Carlos. Sitting Ibeo. pretty. Sitting pretty in first right now. And he's going to have three skaters still to skate after this run. So anything he can do to build on that score is going to help. He may not need it, but you never know. I think if he stays in this, oh no, he popped over. It's still, still a beautiful way to do that. But no sag this time, so already a better run. I switch crook. Oh, oh trying to up it with the switch flip back tail. Rejected. Fortunately. But he knew he had to step up the technicality a little bit if he wanted to improve the score. Oh, he still wants it. Come on, one more. Yeah, give him another. You got time. Yeah, plenty oh, of time. mandatory flat ground. He's going to be hanging on to that first run score. It's keeping him in first. Three now. skaters still to go. Kaidi, Yuto, and Tommy Finn. They all have the tricks and the talent to get it done. It's a question of will they. Right, if they put it together, that could even be our podium. But it's not been the best day for consistency. No. We oversold it. I know. Here we go. Heel flip front board. Signature. Did it on the real one. Yeah. Nice. Tray flip. Backside flip. Cat <laughs> on heel. So casual. 
goodness. Oh, Hugh with her nose slide. You don't see that one very much. No, and especially in the middle of a run. Wow. A lot to appreciate there. Okay. Oh, oh, no! Oh. Wow. No. The, you know, that had the makings of a winning run, but oh, the late big spin. That's that's we a got beautiful one. Came here for. Yeah. Ooh. So good. Still put that tail. Still time. Oh! Heel flip. Heel flip front. 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 Wow. You know. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm a kick flipper, but that just seems so hard to do all these heel flip tricks. You know? Absolutely. Right. I guess right. you know some people are like righty or yeah. lefty, some people are like heel flippers or kick flippers. He's definitely a heel flipper. How yeah. about you, Paul? You a heel flipper or kick flipper? Definitely a kick flipper. Just seems so much easier. He's got a soggy heel. <laughs> <laughs> There's that Sounds like back. a personal problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to my doctor though. He said he said cram it all. <laughs> all right. Kaede over and out. Yuto on deck. So Yuto outside the top three. I bet that was Fodano oh. doing a vibe check right Look, there. Kaede, Huge score, 82-35. Oh, wow. So even with a fall, he did Pick enough to, to make things happen. Moved up into fourth. That puts Yuto down a rung and trying to. He's trying to. He's trying to win. When Yuto gets on a skateboard, he's going for the win, and this is his contest, and we want to see it. Will he get the full pull here? Ali, back 180, switch front 50. All right, keeping it flowing. That one, that one keeps getting a little yeah. loose for him, but he saved that one a bit more gracefully this time. He did. Yeah. All right, all right. Nolly 270 backboard. Signature Utah move. Half to run down, half to go. Switch back tail. Super clean. He's gonna, have to, he's gonna have to step it up and finish real big here. This trick has been eluding him this entire finals. Oh! Switch 180 crook down the 12 stair. Hubba. Clipper tribute. Does that do it? Does that get it done for Utah? Wow. Uh, Jason and, and his co-judges have a lot of thinking to do. That's a, I would hate to be in their position right now because that was, you know, that was really poetic, but it was a very different type of skating than Carlos. I mean, Carlos did a ton of switch tricks. Yeah. But he did have that little sag in his like crook nose slide thing, you know? I think that could hurt him, but. And everything Yuto did was really clean. I wouldn't want to make that decision right now. I think it could go either way. Um, Carlos did more standard tricks, but they were all switch and insanely po uh, impossible. Now, Yuto did more classic Yuto tricks that nobody else does. Those count for a ton, too. We've seen it. What are they going to decide? This is suspenseful. <laughs> Understandable that they're going to be taking their time thinking about it. Moves into first place. Hometown hero. 87.94. Wow. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what stuck in my mind is the crook sagging to no slide for Carlos. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, everybody saw that that wasn't really what he was going for. And Yuto just sealed the deal right there because he landed everything with such precision, with such confidence. Final skater here in the finals. 
at Uprising Tokyo. It's Tommy Finn. He certainly had his day yesterday, but can he repeat it? Trey Flip no slide. Oh, no! Just on a, you know, casual nolly heel into the very small step up, you know? Sometimes it's the little things that trip you up. Oh, but straight back with the Trey Flip lip. It's a good recovery. He know, you know, he could still work his way up a little bit because there were a lot of falls in the people below the top three. You know, like you said, to skate like he skated yesterday, to do that two days in a row, it's a tall order. And, you know, sometimes when you're a veteran, the body takes a bit more time to recover from that, that kind of a day. No slide. He might as well just do that though, because that would be rad to see. I don't see Trey Flip no slide in the re replica. But there we have it. Yuto, the winner of the first uprising. Yeah, this is his event, co created with Rakatan. Tons of pressure on Yuto coming in here today. Qualified in second place through semifinals. Came in here as the favorite, though, and saved the best for last. That last run. <laughs> Kept us guessing all the way through, and then in he classic was. Yuto form, just shuts it down. Well, Yuto Horigome taking it home for Japan with a massive 87.94, followed by the Brazilian Carlos Ribeiro and Toa Sasaki rounding out the podium in third, doing it for Japan. The really cool thing is that Yuto also set his goal of he wanted to make this event happen. And he just said that with Rakuten, he wanted to make this the most out of the partnership, which means events, contests, schools. He wants to, you know, learn more, to learn more about how he can help bring up more skaters in Japan. And he did that and he won it. That's, that's gotta feel good, you know? He awesome. made it happen. Gotta feel incredible. Now let's send it down for the winner interview. All right, guys, we are here with the first winner of Uprising Tokyo right here, Yuto Horigo. Man, one more time for this guy right here, man. And just for fun, I have another Yuto here as well. So Yuto, talk us through what's going through your mind right now. How do you feel, man? Yeah, now I've been able to do あの、またこうやって日本で開催されて多くの観客の人が見てくれて、またここからあの、どんどん日本のスケートボードシーンも盛り上がっていくと思うので、すごい楽しみです。Feel the best and that'll be cool that uh, skateboarding out here is getting more bigger, popular for the next generation. Yeah, so you talk one more time. What do you want to tell the crowds over here to come here and support everybody that came through? What do you want to say to these guys out here? 皆さん今日は見に来てくれてありがとうございます。あのまたこういう舞台でま本当に世界のトッププロスケーターを見れる機会はそんなにないのでこうやってみんなと滑れてたことが嬉しいし、あのいつもサポートしてくれてるみんな
You know, Yuto not only won the thing, but he accomplished the goal of Uprising Tokyo, which is bringing up these up-and-coming skaters. This is how he did it, starting right there. Nobody's doing a trick like that. Nolly back 180, switch from 50 down the Clipper replica. And then from there, it's just classic Yuto, right? Just absolutely flawless. He looks like he's annoyed, like, ah, I overturned on that. <laughs> I <three."> know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll make up for it with this. Nolly back 270 board. It looked so relaxed for him, like the way his arms are just down by his side, like he could have done that in his sleep. And he landed that every single try in all of his runs, and that is no small feat. And then it really did come down to this. A fall here leaves him off the podium entirely. But right. nope, this is Yuto. Switch 180 into a crook. Again, who's doing that? Yuto. Right. Only Yuto. Started with a banger, ended with a banger. Classic Yuto in between. You know, he just really made it happen. And on the last try, too, keeping us guessing the whole time. Goes on, there's really no stopping. So again, this this event was meant to showcase the Japanese talent, bring famous spots to Tokyo, and let these skaters have at it. I feel like it worked out. All of that was accomplished here today, and I hope it's the first of many because it was definitely a beautiful array of the talent coming up here in Japan. Absolutely. So hopefully, there's more to come. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. So, what a day of skateboarding. What a weekend of skateboarding it has been here from Tokyo. And a huge congratulations to the women's winner, Aoi Yimamura, and men's winner, Yuto Horigome, at Uprising Tokyo, supported by Rakuten. Thanks for being here, everybody. See you next time.